Find rest as you listen to this peaceful bedtime story. For more Bible stories that bring you refreshing sleep, download the Abide app in the iTunes or Google Play Store. Welcome. This Christian meditation uses the words of Scripture to guide you into true peace and deep rest, which are both gifts God desires to give you. Before we begin, let's get any distractions out of the way. Make sure the lights are low and you're in a comfortable position, not too hot and not too cold. If you'd like to, find some calming music on the Abide app or simply enjoy the quiet. Don't worry about trying to fall asleep. If you do fall asleep, the app will stop automatically. If you come to the end of this meditation and find that you're still awake, you can simply tap the replay button and listen again to the Word of God. What better way to fall asleep than while hearing God's sweet promises? As we prepare to begin, take a moment to name any worries that are weighing you down. Don't be ashamed of your anxiety. Offer it to God. Remember, that Jesus said that you could cast your cares on him. Picture your worries like rocks in a backpack. Take them out one by one and hand them to Jesus. If those worries show up in your backpack again, that's okay. Just give them to Jesus again. He is our ever-present help in times of trouble. He does not grow weary, and he desires to give you his peace. Having surrendered your worries and fears to God, feel the lightness in your spirit. You don't have to carry those things anymore. You're free of them. Feel the weight gone from your shoulders. Feel the muscles of your neck and back loosen and relax free of the burden they were carrying notice your breath don't judge it just notice it is it shallow or deep now as you breathe out surrender more of your worries to God feel your tension move through your body and out with your breath as you exhale then breathe in God's peace feeling it move through your body and expanding inside of you feel the relaxation in your shoulders deepen as you breathe out the tension and breathe in God's peace keep breathing out the tension and in the peace of God as I read to you from Psalm 4 Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Tremble and do not sin when you are on your beds search your hearts and be silent offer the sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord God you answer when we call to you and you alone have the power to answer prayers please have mercy on your child relieve your child's distress and anxiety lift the burdens from their shoulders and help them to trust your power and your providence your deep love for them i ask this in the name of the father son and holy spirit Be 
Feel the relaxation spread out from your shoulders and back into your arms and deep inside your chest. Feel each individual muscle loosen, continuing to breathe out your tension and in God's peace. Let your awareness of God's mercy be stronger than any other thought in your mind. Let's pray these words from Psalm 3 cover you like a blanket. But you, Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts my head high. I call out to the Lord, and he answers me from his holy mountain. I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. From the Lord comes deliverance. May your blessing be on your people. God, you are our protector and defender and deliverer. Your children have nothing to fear, for you are with us. Thank you for hearing prayers and answering them. Thank you for staying with your child through the night never leaving or forsaking them thank you for the new mercies you have for this child when you wake them in the morning in the name of the father son and holy spirit i pray listen to your breathing listen to your breathing slow and steady breathe out any tension breathe in God's peace slowly meditate on these words I will lie down and sleep and sleep in peace for you alone O Lord make me dwell in safety let them become your refrain i will lie down and sleep and sleep in peace for you alone O lord make me dwell in safety i will lie down and sleep and sleep in peace for you alone O lord make me dwell in safety let the rhythm of that refrain become the rhythm of your heart as we hear these words from Psalm 4 O oh God you have declared me perfect in your eyes you have always cared for me in my distress hear me now as I call again have mercy on me hear my prayer the gladness you have given me is far greater than the joy at harvest time I will lie down in peace and sleep for though I am alone O Lord you will keep me safe Lord you keep your child safe in peace in comfort and rest and restoration you desire to give your child all good things you hear your child when they call to you and you give them gladness and joy now dear father lead your child into sleep fill them with peace and a sense of safety allow them to feel your presence to know that you are near and that you are ever watchful God of all comfort comfort your child you have taken all their burdens upon yourself give them a sense of the freedom you've granted draw them deeper into your rest and your peace and your love tonight may they sleep 
and sleep in peace for you alone O Lord make them dwell in safety and may they wake in the morning refreshed and with your song of joy in their heart in the name of Jesus I pray amen pace your breathing as I pray from Isaiah 26 God will keep you in perfect and constant peace tonight God will make your mind steadfast committed focused on him tonight trust God tonight with your sleep take refuge in God's loving arms tonight as you see sleep be confident in the arms of your Savior tonight trust confidently in God forever God is your fortress God is your shield God is your banner God is everlasting he is your protector tonight he is your rock for all time dear peaceful and restful father bring this one your child rest and sleep tonight keep them from tossing keep them from turning Lord God you never sleep Lord God you never slumber so watch over this your child tonight as they sleep bring peace to their churning mind comfort their mind from spinning soothe their heart calm them tonight give them sweet rest in your arms in Jesus's name amen pace your breathing as I pray from Psalm 91 God is covering you tonight God is completely protecting you with his strength you are protected under his wings tonight you can find rest under his wings tonight you can find refuge in the loving arms of God tonight God's faithfulness is your shield tonight God's faithfulness is a wall protecting you from harm so you can rest tonight pace your breathing as you listen to the Word of God being prayed softly over you breathe slow and deep as you hear God's words for you tonight as you lay down to sleep do not be afraid tonight as you lay down tonight let your sleep be sweet in peace God will be with you tonight as you sleep you are not alone God is with you and you will be safe as you sleep tonight God will give you his beloved peaceful sleep tonight God will give you sleep God will give you slumber he will fold your hands as you rest you will lie down to rest tonight you will rest peacefully you will wake up in the morning fresh for the Lord sustains and cares for you God will not let you move tonight you will be at peace he will be there for you all night because God does not slumber or sleep he stays with you so that you can sleep dear peaceful father thank you for your peace your care your love your mercy your salvation as this child of yours finds sleep tonight as they sleep let them feel your presence over them let them sleep under your wings and it is in Jesus' name I pray over them amen
in that great mind of yours there are many things begging for your attention think about me instead they say think about change you may feel like life is just too static and you're longing for things to change you find yourself running through various scenarios and situations imagining the ways in which you might make a change in life with an unknown conclusion your mind could wander endlessly yes it begs for your attention but this is not the time say good night change and rest in the peace of God and again we look to the Word of God in 2nd Thessalonians 3 verse 16 now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way the Lord be with all of you the Lord gives you peace though many things beg for your attention this is not the time this is not the time to wonder this is not the time for endless scenarios and mindless wanderings this is the time for rest it is the time for peace for the Lord of peace himself will give you peace at all times and in every way especially right now God indeed invites you into his all-consuming peace inviting you to lay down the things that cause you stress fear or concern even the menial things that gather in your mind as the day draws to a close remember the Lord is peace and he draws you near to rest in him as Saint Augustine once said our hearts are restless until they rest in you rest in God your father tonight as you lay down for sleep feel his peace deeply as you dream dreams of heaven often when you lay down to sleep your mind kicks into high gear and it can be so hard to slow it down while there are so many things that bite for your attention bedtime is a time of rest so choose to say good night to stress and to the things that beg you to notice them as you rest in the peace of God with your eyes closed take a slow deep breath breathing in through your nose let your lungs fill with air feeling your abdomen expand pause for a moment before slowly exhaling through your mouth letting your stomach deflate as you do relax your shoulders into your bed feeling the tension dissolve adjust your neck and head as they rest on your pillow point and flex your toes feeling that stretch all the way through your legs do this once more letting the stress of your day release take another deep breath remembering that your day is done all that is set before you now is to rest in peace that is the gift of God let me pray for you father God we give you thanks for who you are thank you 
for your kindness and grace thank you for your everlasting peace thank you that in you this beloved child can find rest Lord as they lie down to sleep tonight let them feel your presence and know that you are near there are so many things that are begging for their attention but what you know they need is rest not just for their body but deep within their soul only you can bring the deep rest that they need and I ask you to do so now as they lie down their heart is restless until it rests in you so be near to them now Jesus in your precious name I pray amen dear one the day is through the night is here now so you can rest at ease what's said is said and what's done is done your heart can rest in peace say good night to all your stress and all the turmoil it brings so you can rest most peacefully in the arms of the king of kings in that great mind of yours there are many things to do there are finances and relationships and work that is new there's the past and the future and today to distract there's to do's and what ifs and change at your back say good night one by one they will not delay so rest in your Lord at the end of this day second Thessalonians 3 verse 16 in the New International Version says now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way the Lord be with all of you the Lord is peace allow the Holy Spirit to bring you peace and allow you to say good night to all those distractions acknowledge them each and then set them aside in that great mind of yours there are many things begging for your attention think about me instead they say think about your finances you may be thinking about upcoming bills wondering if you will have enough or a potential new job wondering if it's worth the pay cut you may be thinking about debt wondering if you'll ever get out you may be running numbers adding and subtracting searching your mind for transactions and upcoming expenses it begs for your attention but this is not the time say good night finances and rest in the peace of God in that great mind of yours there are many things begging for your attention think about me instead they say think about your relationships you may be worried about your marriage wondering if you'll make it through a hard season you may be worried about your children wondering how they'll weather this storm you may be longing for a relationship wondering if it will ever come you may be in need of reconciliation wishing you hadn't said that thing it begs for your attention but this is not the time 
say good night relationships and rest in the peace of God in that great mind of yours there are many things begging for your attention think about me instead they say think about your work you may be thinking about your vocation wondering if it's the right thing you may be considering a change wondering if you've waited too long you may be hung up on a project wishing you had made more progress you may be mourning the loss of work desperate to find something new you may be wishing this year had been different imagining where you'd be if you hadn't lost work it begs for your attention but this is not the time say good night work and rest in the peace of God remember God's Word from 2nd Thessalonians 3 verse 16 now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way the Lord be with all of you may the Lord give you peace in that great mind of yours there are many things begging for your attention think about me instead they say think about your past you may be caught up in regret wishing you had done things differently you may be replaying conversations thinking maybe you should have said it another way you may be caught up in nostalgia wishing you could turn back time it begs for your attention but this is not the time say good night past and rest in the peace of God in that great mind of yours there are many things begging for your attention think about me instead they say think about your future there may be an important decision you need to make and you're debating the many potential outcomes in your mind you may be excited about upcoming plans hopeful nothing will keep them from happening you may be playing out future scenarios wondering how you can see them come to pass oh it begs for your attention but this is not the time say good night future and rest in the peace of God in that great mind of yours there are many things begging for your attention think about me instead they say think about the present there are so many things that can beg for your attention as your day comes to a close you are likely managing a myriad of relationships and situations with plenty of space for your mind to wander it begs for your attention but this is not the time say good night present and rest in the peace of God remember God's Word from 2nd Thessalonians 3 verse 16 now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way the Lord be with all of you let the Lord give you peace in that great mind of yours there are so many things begging for your attention 
think about me instead they say think about your to-do list you may be lying in bed thinking of all the things you need to do tomorrow errands you need to run deals you need to seal phone calls you need to make there are people who need you tasks that are waiting on you details that will not be noticed by anyone but you you may be planning out your morning wondering if you have coffee or anything for breakfast you may be remembering a forgotten appointment or realizing you double booked it begs for your attention but this is not the time say good night to do list and rest in the peace of God in that great mind of yours there are many things begging for your attention think about me instead they say think about what if like your own little daydream when you really ought to be dreaming your mind may beckon you into scenarios that could have been what if you had gone there what if you had done that what if this were different what if that were the same oh there are so many possibilities of where your mind might wander instead of sleep it begs for your attention but this is not the time say good night what ifs and rest in the peace of God in that great mind of yours there are many things begging for your attention think about me instead they say think about change you may feel like life is just too static and you're longing for things to change you find yourself running through various scenarios and situations imagining the ways in which you might make a change in life with an unknown conclusion your mind could wander endlessly yes it begs for your attention but this is not the time say good night change and rest in the peace of God and again we look to the Word of God in 2nd Thessalonians 3 verse 16 now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way the Lord be with all of you the Lord gives you peace though many things beg for your attention this is not the time this is not the time to wonder this is not the time for endless scenarios and mindless wanderings this is the time for rest it is the time for peace for the Lord of peace himself will give you peace at all times and in every way especially right now God indeed invites you into his all-consuming peace inviting you to lay down the things that cause you stress fear or concern even the menial things that gather in your mind as the day draws to a close remember the Lord is peace and he draws you near to rest in him as Saint Augustine once said our hearts are restless until they rest in you 
rest in God your father tonight as you lay down for sleep feel his peace deeply as you dream dreams of heaven Psalm 9012 says teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom God's favor rests on us all the days of our life each new day is a gift all of our days are in God's hands with God's wisdom we're able to make the most of each and every day to enjoy our life to the fullest take a few deep breaths in and out inviting God's presence into your whole being when breathing out let the matters of your day drift further and further away from you you're so precious to the Lord he cares for your heart and wants you to live a happy healthy life he stores up treasures in heaven for us even now he's thinking of new ways to reward you he provides us with the wisdom we need to live each day according to his perfect plan he can't wait to give you the kingdom so close your eyes and relax your neck and shoulders as you continue deep slow breaths move down to your abdomen your thighs your calves your feet feel each one tighten and then relax telling your body that it's time to rest pull your blanket around you sink your head into your pillow notice the sounds of your home and then let them fade into the background let all distractions just fade away let's pray Lord I thank you for the honor of getting to pray for your dear child tonight bless this dear one with your peace that passes all understanding we know that you've created us to do good things and we trust that you will help us to fulfill the plans you have for us Lord let your presence envelop this precious child of yours in sweet and restful sleep in the name of Jesus I pray amen listen as I speak God's Word from Psalm 9012 once more teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom with every new day we have numerous opportunities to store up our treasure in heaven Luke 21 32 to 34 says do not be afraid little flock for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom sell your possessions and give to the poor provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out a treasure in heaven that will never fail where no thief comes near and no moth destroys Jeremiah 29 11 says for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you a hope and a future you're not here by accident God chose you to be alive at this very time in history he sees and knows the master plan our lives are in his hands we make our choices but he has the final say we've been given a choice today and every day what we focus on determines how we live Luke 21 34 says for where your treasure is 
there your heart will be also. Living a life worthy of your calling is following in the footsteps of Jesus. To be a Christian is to be like Christ. God's rewards are waiting for you right now. Thank him now for guiding you along your path every day. He reaches down to hold you in the hard times. He carries you when you need him the most. He enjoys helping you. He even loves helping you go to sleep. God wants us to enjoy our life on earth. But our life on earth is just a blink of an eye compared to what awaits us in heaven. Picture yourself resting in the arms of the Father tonight. He smiles at you because he knows the great rewards that await you in heaven. Revelation 22.12 says, Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. Imagine that every good thing you do on this earth has a reward in heaven. As your body rests, picture God taking your spirit to heaven with him right now. See yourself walking on a pathway through a gorgeous forest. The air is so clean and fresh. You come to a special place where you see the foundation for a house is being laid. You have a sense of home that warms your whole being. This is the mansion that God is designing for you in heaven. Each brick is being put into its perfect place for all eternity. Jesus himself is the cornerstone that holds it all together. You notice that each brick is a representation of your doing the will of God in your earthly life and producing great fruit for his kingdom. Every time you spoke a word of kindness or showed compassion or even just shared a smile, another brick was laid into the foundation of your heavenly home. Your sacrifice, your hard work, your diligence and perseverance are not going unnoticed. God rewards those who diligently seek him. He rewards those who do the good work of his hands. As the mortar is being mixed up and put between the bricks, you see that it's made from the loyalty that binds your heart to the truth of God's word. God is overjoyed when he sees you denying your fleshly desires and seeking the truth in every situation of life. He is so proud of you every time you let his light shine through you in the way that you treat the people he's put into your care. He will say to you, well done, good and faithful servant, when you arrive in heaven one day. As you watch more bricks being put into the foundation of your heavenly mansion, you also notice that there are new fruit trees sprouting up next to the house. You see a tree with the most delicious looking fruit. The Spirit of God tells you it's called the tree of peace and harmony. You remember a time when you chose to stay in peace and trust the Lord, even in moments. Even moments like these are rewarded in heaven. You feel that warmth? That's God's love shining on you. He enjoys your presence as well, and like a good father, enjoys giving you good things. You're a representation of his holiness and made in his likeness. If there's anything you've been holding in your heart, perhaps some unforgiveness, or a grudge against someone else. Bring it now before the Lord and lay it down at his feet. 
for his burdens are easy and his yoke is light and he will take whatever it is that you surrender to him and make all things new now that your burden has been lifted and you've let go search your heart and mind for anything else you may need to let go of perhaps even some anxious thoughts that are keeping you from sleep lay down anything now and ask God to take care of it for you and now as you rest you feel lighter you feel weightless peace as the Lord's joy shines upon you you're enjoying the peace of knowing that God has great and beautiful things in store for you and he will continue to give you the wisdom you need to succeed along the journey of life you're now walking back down the path and you see a little river off to the side the water looks so inviting and warm as you step into it your whole body surrenders to the love of Christ the water is so comforting and you can sit down and relax in the soft sand at the bottom of the river small pieces of gold are shimmering in the sunlight that warms your body you realize just how happy you are at this very moment God's glory is shining all around you and he wants you to know he is so pleased with you God is proud of you rest in his loving care he will be with you every moment of every day he will guide you in making good choices let your mind and body rest in the peace of God now God appreciates and thanks you for every act of loving kindness that you make as you continue to live your life with honesty and integrity you smile because you know you will be rewarded in heaven all the good things we do will not go unnoticed by the King of Kings every day matters he has gifts waiting for you every day of your life tomorrow when you wake up you'll feel refreshed and so full of love God will enable you to find new opportunities to love and serve others and in doing so you'll be faithfully rewarded on into eternity dear Lord thank you for reminding us that each day is precious to you thank you for always taking care of us and sending your angels to guard us as we sleep may we enjoy all the gifts you've given us as we make the most of the time we've been given upon this earth in Jesus name I pray amen often when you lay down to sleep Your mind kicks into high gear and it can be so hard to slow it down while there are so many things that fight for your attention bedtime is a time of rest so choose to say good night to stress and to the things that beg you to notice them as you rest in the peace of God with your eyes closed Take a slow, deep breath, breathing in through your nose 
let your lungs fill with air feeling your abdomen expand pause for a moment before slowly exhaling through your mouth letting your stomach deflate as you do relax your shoulders into your bed feeling the tension dissolve adjust your neck and head as they rest on your pillow point and flex your toes feeling that stretch all the way through your legs do this once more letting the stress of your day release take another deep breath remembering that your day is done all that is set before you now is to rest in peace that is the gift of God let me pray for you father God we give you thanks for who you are thank you for your kindness and grace thank you for your everlasting peace thank you that in you this beloved child can find rest Lord as they lie down to sleep tonight let them feel your presence and know that you are near there are so many things that are begging for their attention but what you know they need is rest not just for their body but deep within their soul only you can bring the deep rest that they need and I ask you to do so now as they lie down their heart is restless until it rests in you so be near to them now Jesus in your precious name I pray amen dear one the day is through the night is here now so you can rest at ease what's said is said and what's done is done your heart can rest in peace say good night to all your stress and all the turmoil it brings so you can rest most peacefully in the arms of the King of Kings in that great mind of yours there are many things to do there are finances and relationships and work that is new there's the past and the future and today to distract there's to do's and what ifs and change at your back say good night one by one they will not delay so rest in your Lord at the end of this day second Thessalonians 3 verse 16 in the New International Version says now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way the Lord be with all of you the Lord is peace allow the Holy Spirit to bring you peace and allow you to say good night to all those distractions acknowledge them each and then set them aside in that great mind of yours there are many things begging for your attention think about me instead they say think about your finances you may be thinking about upcoming bills wondering if you will have enough or a potential new job wondering if it's worth the pay cut you may be thinking about debt wondering if you'll ever get out you may be running numbers 
adding and subtracting, searching your mind for transactions and upcoming expenses. It begs for your attention, but this is not the time. Say good night, finances, and rest in the peace of God. In that great mind of yours there are many things begging for your attention think about me instead they say think about your relationships you may be worried about your marriage wondering if you'll make it through a hard season you may be worried about your children wondering how they'll weather this storm you may be longing for a relationship wondering if it will ever come you may be in need of reconciliation wishing you hadn't said that thing it begs for your attention but this is not the time say good night relationships and rest in the peace of god in that great mind of yours there are many things begging for your attention think about me instead they say think about your work you may be thinking about your vocation wondering if it's the right thing you may be considering a change wondering if you've waited too long you may be hung up on a project wishing you had made more progress you may be mourning the loss of work desperate to find something new you may be wishing this year had been different imagining where you'd be if you hadn't lost work it begs for your attention but this is not the time say good night work and rest in the peace of God remember God's word from 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 16 now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way the Lord be with all of you may the Lord give you peace in that great mind of yours there are many things begging for your attention think about me instead they say think about your past you may be caught up in regret wishing you had done things differently you may be replaying conversations thinking maybe you should have said it another way you may be caught up in nostalgia wishing you could turn back time it begs for your attention but this is not the time say good night past and rest in the peace of God in that great mind of yours there are many things begging for your attention think about me instead they say think about your future there may be an important decision you need to make and you're debating the many potential outcomes in your mind you may be excited about upcoming plans hopeful nothing will keep them from happening you may be playing out future scenarios wondering how you can see them come to pass oh it begs for your attention this is not the time say good night future and rest in the peace of God in that great mind of yours there are many things begging for your attention 
think about me instead they say think about the present there are so many things that can beg for your attention as your day comes to a close you are likely managing a myriad of relationships and situations with plenty of space for your mind to wander it begs for your attention but this is not the time say good night present and rest in the peace of God remember God's word from 2nd Thessalonians 3 verse 16 now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way the Lord be with all of you let the Lord give you peace in that great mind of yours there are so many things begging for your attention think about me instead they say think about your to-do list you may be lying in bed thinking of all the things you need to do tomorrow errands you need to run deals you need to seal phone calls you need to make there are people who need you tasks that are waiting on you details that will not be noticed by anyone but you you may be planning out your morning wondering if you have coffee or anything for breakfast you may be remembering a forgotten appointment or realizing you double booked it begs for your attention but this is not the time say good night to do list and rest in the peace of God in that great mind of yours there are many things begging for your attention think about me instead they say think about what if like your own little daydream when you really ought to be dreaming your mind may beckon you into scenarios that could have been what if you had gone there what if you had done that what if this were different what if that were the same oh there are so many possibilities of where your mind might wander instead of sleep it begs for your attention but this is not the time say good night what ifs and rest in the peace of God in that great mind of yours there are many things begging for your attention think about me instead they say think about change you may feel like life is just too static and you're longing for things to change you find yourself running through various scenarios and situations imagining the ways in which you might make a change in life with an unknown conclusion your mind could wander endlessly yes it begs for your attention but this is not the time say good night change and rest in the peace of God And again we look to the Word of God in 2nd Thessalonians 3 verse 16 now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way the Lord be with all of you the Lord gives you peace though many things beg for your attention 
this is not the time this is not the time to wonder this is not the time for endless scenarios and mindless wanderings this is the time for rest it is the time for peace for the Lord of peace himself will give you peace at all times and in every way especially right now God indeed invites you into his all-consuming peace inviting you to lay down the things that cause you stress fear or concern even the menial things that gather in your mind as the day draws to a close remember the Lord is peace and he draws you near to rest in him as Saint Augustine once said our hearts are restless until they rest in you rest in God your father tonight as you lay down for sleep feel his peace deeply as you dream dreams of heaven many of us have been carrying added burdens about health and well-being as well as financial burdens that keep us awake at night the sheer uncertainty about money our jobs and what the future holds has caused a lot of unrest if this describes you my friend please know you are not alone here at abide we are committed to encourage you and uplift you with comforting scriptures to help you have peace of mind but before we open the Word of God and hear his life-giving truths please take a moment to get settled and comfortable take a deep breath in and let it out tonight's meditation comes from Ecclesiastes chapter 5 in verses 18 through 20 King Solomon says this is what I have observed to be good that it is appropriate for a person to eat to drink and to find satisfaction in their toilsome labor under the Sun during the few days of life God has given them for this is their lot moreover when God gives someone wealth and possessions and the ability to enjoy them to accept their lot and be happy in their toil this is a gift of God they seldom reflect on the days of their life because God keeps them occupied with gladness of heart gladness of heart rest on these words for several moments now take another slow deep breath in and hold it and exhale releasing everything to the Lord let's pray together Heavenly Father we invite your Holy Spirit to fill this place as this beloved person listens to the words of the scriptures and finds comfort I ask you to be with them Lord we know that you are sovereign over every area of our lives over our health our families our finances and our homes God you are aware of every situation please Heavenly Father in the name of your son Jesus cover this child tonight remind them that they are your child accepted into your family they are not alone please move through every circumstance through every health concern 
and through every financial worry give them the assurance of your peace the peace that rises above all that is going on in the world please Lord give this beloved person gladness of heart tonight right here right now please fill their heart with great contentment for it is a gift from your hand to find satisfaction in their toil thank you father for leading the way by your word your spirit and your truth in the name of Jesus I pray amen feel the comforting presence of the Holy Spirit he surrounds you with peace he is the great comforter he is your advocate and he is the one who guards your life your financial well-being and your home the familiar phrase home is where the heart is has long described the place where we feel most loved and secure it can be any place in the world it doesn't even have to be a building or a structure it's simply the place where you have a foundation of peace joy and a sense of well-being so allow your mind to drift to the place that brings you the most comfort the most joy and the most peace for believers in Christ our true home is heaven eternity with our Lord and Savior and the place he has prepared for each of us as Jesus told his disciples in John 14 if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am there you may be also find great peace in the words of Jesus tonight inhale the assurance of love and security you feel in the presence of God and exhale the remnants of worry and concern the Lord is with you you can depend on him through every financial hardship God directs you with his righteous right hand allow yourself to be led into a place of peace by the righteous right hand of the Father gracious God in this quiet hour we find peace in your presence it is a true peace that surpasses all understanding and helps us see things from a heavenly view thank you Lord tonight please give this listener a deep sense that everything is going to be all right bless them with a knowing that you are in control and you are fully aware of every situation please impress on them a sense of heavenly support sustenance and supply from your hand father give them the abundance found in your son for it is in your desire that we may have life and life abundant in the name of Jesus amen home is where the heart is our earthly homes provide a safe haven a place where we kick up our feet at the end of a long day and gather with loved ones we create an environment of peace in our homes by lighting a few candles turning on worship music and carving out time to read the word and pray these things help us refocus reconnect and refresh in this quiet hour 
feel the refreshment that comes by being in the presence of the Lord as King Solomon so beautifully said this is what I have observed to be good that it is appropriate for a person to eat to drink and to find satisfaction in their toilsome labor under the Sun during the few days of life God has given them for this is their lot moreover when God gives someone wealth and possessions and the ability to enjoy them to accept their lot and be happy in their toil this is a gift of God they seldom reflect on the days of their life because God keeps them occupied with gladness of heart let these words of encouragement settle over you for a moment we find satisfaction in our daily lives by receiving the blessings of God we have joy peace and provision by the gracious hand of the Father we are consumed with gladness of heart when we remain focused on the gifts of God Heavenly Father thank you for the many gifts you give on a daily basis please help this dear child to recognize the abundant blessings you've poured out on them open the eyes of their heart to see the good things you've done help them receive with open arms the riches of Christ Jesus and please Lord turn their hearts toward their heavenly home the place where they will live for all eternity with you for with you our hearts remain and the place you are preparing for us is our true home in Jesus name amen in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 we hear these words he has made everything beautiful in its time also he has put eternity into man's heart everything is made beautiful in God's timing rest assured in that thought tonight eternity is placed in our hearts because heaven is our forever home we look for it we long for it we patiently await our forever home pastor Greg Laurie once said deep inside of us there is a homesickness for heaven almost as though we have a homing instinct guiding us there allow visions of heaven to encompass your dreams tonight oh how we long for heaven's home that place of perfect peace where the crystal river flows from God's throne down the middle of golden streets oh how we long for heaven's home an eternity of joyous song where the melodies of all the saints join angels in the throng oh how we long for heaven's home with Jesus our Savior and friend the place that's been prepared for us and for eternity we will spend Lord God as we rest peacefully in visions of eternity tonight we thank you for your promises beyond every circumstance we face we know we can count on you to work it out according to your purpose and for your glory you act on our behalf thank you father we need that consolation tonight we need the peace of your presence 
and we need the assurance of heaven our true home please continue to move through the life of this listener and settle their mind on your abundant blessings help them rise above their current circumstances and rest in your perfect peace for you make everything beautiful in its time you place eternity in the hearts of humans you gift us with gladness of heart thank you God for your continual loving provision we are forever grateful for the abundance of your son Jesus in whose name we pray amen the book of second Timothy advises that following Christ is marked by challenges and sacrifice but these struggles are not a sign of Jesus absence it's in this hardship that Jesus faithfulness is made most real breathe that truth in now take a deep breath in Christ will return and breathe out and make all things right breathe in I will not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ and out allow yourself to settle your mind and body on God's presence he is faithful take another deep breath Christ will return and make all things right and breathe out please pray with me faithful God we trust that you are with us always in our struggles thank you for sending your son Jesus to forgive our sins so we can be with you even in the depth of our sin and help us to trust you even when we struggle in this world because of our faith give us strength and commitment to sacrifice for the gospel just as your son did thank you God that you saved this child and us all and have called us to a holy life not because of anything we have done but because of your grace please bless this child as they rest in your presence and power knowing that you are enough speak to their heart tonight in the depth of their hardship and the challenges they face show them your power and presence in your powerful name I pray amen second Timothy 1 Paul an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God in keeping with the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus to Timothy my dear son grace mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did with a clear conscience as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers recalling your tears I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy I am reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice and I am persuaded now lives in you also for this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands for the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid but gives us power love and self-discipline so do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me his prisoner rather join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God he has saved us and called us to a holy life not because of anything we have done but because of his own purpose and grace 
This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet, this is no cause for shame, because I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. What you heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. You know that everyone in the province of Asia has deserted me, including Phygelus and Hermogenes. May the Lord show mercy to the household of Onesiphorus, because he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. On the contrary, when he was in Rome, he searched hard for me until he found me. May the Lord grant that he will find mercy from the Lord on that day. You know very well in how many ways he helped me in Ephesus. 2 Timothy chapter 2 You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses entrust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. The hard-working farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I am saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. Remember, Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel, for which I am suffering even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Here is a trustworthy saying. If we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will also disown us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. Keep reminding God's people of these things. Warn them before God against quarreling about words. It is of no value and only ruins those who listen. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Avoid godless chatter because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. Their teaching will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymenaeus and Philetus, who have departed from the truth. They say that the resurrection has already taken place, and they destroy the faith of some. Nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm, sealed with this inscription. The Lord knows those who are his, and everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. In a large house, there are articles not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. 
Some are for special purposes and some for common use. Those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for special purposes, made holy, useful to the master and prepared to do any good work. Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because you know they produce quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. Opponents must be gently instructed in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of the truth, and that they will come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil who has taken them captive to do his will. 2 Timothy chapter 3 But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. They are the kind who worm their way into homes and gain control over gullible women, who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires. Always learning, but never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. Just as Janus and Jambres opposed Moses, so also these teachers oppose the truth. They are men of depraved minds who, as far as the faith is concerned, are rejected. But they will not get very far because, as in the case of those men, their folly will be clear to everyone. You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance persecutions sufferings what kinds of things happened to me in Antioch Iconium and Lystra the persecutions I endured yet the Lord rescued me from all of them in fact everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted while evildoers and imposters will go from bad to worse deceiving and being deceived but as for you continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you learned it and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching rebuking correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work second Timothy chapter 4 in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus who will judge the living and the dead and in view of his appearing and his kingdom I give you this charge preach the word be prepared in season and out of season correct rebuke and encourage with great patience and careful instruction for the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine instead to suit their own desires they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear they will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths and you 
Keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Do your best to come to me quickly, for Demas, because he loved this world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia and Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you because he is helpful to me in my ministry. I sent Tychicus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas and my scrolls, especially the parchments. Alexander the metal worker did me a great deal of harm. The Lord will repay him for what he has done. You too should be on your guard against him because he strongly opposed our message. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them, but the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet Priscilla and Aquila and the household of Onesiphorus. Erastus stayed in Corinth, and I left Trophimus sick in Miletus. Do your best to get here before winter. Abulus greets you, and so do Pudens, Linus, Claudia, and all the brothers and sisters. The Lord be with your spirit. Grace be with you all. Lord, I pray that your spirit would fill your beloved child tonight. Give them your grace. As they sleep tonight, let them be filled with your power to strengthen them for the challenges and hardships that lie ahead. May your presence be made most tangible in their struggles. Help them to hold fast to you in difficulty. May they know you more deeply because of their challenges. I ask that you would grow their faith to withstand all that life may throw at them. I pray this in Jesus' name. Fill me with your power and presence now as I continue to abide in Christ. Would you pray with me heavenly father thank you for being with us now and thank you for the good gift of rest we are tired and in need of your renewal be present with us as we sleep and protect us through the hours of the night so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this life may rest in your eternal changelessness we pray this in the name of Jesus amen now before we read from God's Word let's make sure you're comfortable adjust the lights or the blankets if you need to and let's take just a few minutes for progressive muscle relaxation to get your body ready to sleep we're going to tense muscle groups one at a time holding the tension for about five seconds then exhaling 
and letting that muscle group fully relax for 10 to 20 seconds before you move on to the next muscle group. Research has shown that this technique offers a range of benefits, including pain relief and better sleep. It may also reduce migraines and systolic blood pressure. So, begin by lifting your toes upward, tensing your muscles, hold. Then let go. Now, pull your toes downward. Hold. Then let go. Good. Next, tense your calf muscles. Hold. Then let go. Move your knees toward each other. Hold. Then let go. Now squeeze your thigh muscles. Hold. Then let go. Clench your hands. Pause. Now let go. Squeeze your buttocks. Hold. Then let go. Contract your abdominal muscles. Hold. Now let go. Inhale and tighten your chest. Hold. Now exhale and let go. Raise your shoulders to your ears. Hold. Now let go. Purse your lips together. Hold. Then let go. Open your mouth wide. Hold. Then let go. Close your eyes tightly. Hold. Now release. Good. Let your whole body relax warm and loose as you rest in safety. And pray with the psalmist, God, 
When my anxious thoughts multiply within me, your comforts delight me. What comforts has God given you? Or in another translation, Lord, when doubts fill my mind, when my heart is in turmoil, quiet me and give me renewed hope and cheer. Heavenly Father, all good gifts come from you, all hope and all cheer, all comforts and consolations. Thank you for sending your Son, Jesus. Thank you for sending your spirit to abide with your precious child. Help them tonight to abide in you, to trade their worries and sorrows for your peace and your joy. May your spirit minister to them as they sleep. Give them the gifts of deep rest and true renewal. It's in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Let your breathing stay slow and steady as I read parts of Philippians 4, where Paul writes, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus finally brothers and sisters whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is right whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is admirable if anything is excellent or praiseworthy think about such things God we want to think on the things that you have called lovely and good whatsoever is true Jesus says I am the truth the truth shines like light that the darkness cannot overcome like the Sun brilliant on a summer's day at the coast the Sun sparkles on the water and warms your skin if you clamber up from the soft white beaches to the rocky cliffs you can see the Sun lighting the landscape for miles and miles the truth shines like the Sun and the truth burns like a fire that will never go out like a beach campfire that keeps you warm as you rest next to it gazing at the multitude of stars overhead the air is only slightly chilly and the fire is just right this fire burns away all falsehoods and warms you with its truth whatsoever is noble what if there was a king and queen who never abused their power can you imagine monarchs who aren't noble because they were born to the right parents or owned the right land but whose character was all goodness and kindness these monarchs would not wear costly royal robes while their subjects starved they would cast off the trappings of nobility and exchange them for true nobility of character sharing their riches so that all in the kingdom could flourish together their lands would be fruitful with crops their people live in peace and freedom whatsoever is right imagine after hours of being turned around making wrong turns and getting stuck in gridlock traffic 
finding yourself on the right road there's not a doubt in anyone's mind this is the way and the road is open before you green fields on either side the shadows of mountains in the distance you're not in a rush this is the way you'll get there when the time is right so for now you roll down the windows turn up the music and sing along the air smells like fresh cut grass and honeysuckle and the radio is playing songs you all know the words to a person you love is in the front seat next to you this is the place God has appointed for you and it feels right in every way whatsoever is pure pure like the first snowfall of the season thick flakes drifting softly from the sky making the world soft and quiet the air smells clean and cold and as the hours pass the whole world turns white outside your window you see neighbors bringing their toddler out to play she's bundled up all roly-poly and puffy snow clothes hats and mittens and boots it's her first snow is this a sandcastle she asks her mom who smiles she touches it tastes it lies down next to her mom as they wave arms and legs making angels in the snow the purity of the landscape the purity of delight in Jesus you are made pure like that washed white as snow God's delight in you is as pure as that whatever is lovely have you ever seen a couple married for decades and decades still in love picture them pushing 90 they don't move quickly their faces are lined their skin droops their shoulders round forward their hair what's left of it white and thin but when they look at each other they see all those things but they don't really see them because they know each other inside and out they see who they were at 20 and at 35 and at 60 they see each other not just their bodies but their souls they love not just because they're lovely but because the long practice of loving each other has made them lovely holding on to each other they head out for their daily walk around the lake where they practice beholding all the lovely things that God has made the loon calling out the silvery flash of fish under the water the soft dark soil of the path the tall trees that existed before they did and will continue to shade this path when they're gone whatever is admirable excellent praiseworthy think on these things let the spirit bring to mind those things in your life that are praiseworthy the people the gifts of food shelter companionship the things that are truly excellent gifts of a loving father God all good and perfect gifts come from you I pray with the psalmist when I thought my foot is slipping your steadfast love O Lord held me up when the cares of my heart are many 
your consolations cheer my soul help me to fix my thoughts on you to trust you and to rest in the truth that through Jesus I have been saved sink deeply into sleep as I read the truth from Philippians one final time fix your thoughts on what is true and good and right think about things that are pure and lovely and dwell on the fine good things in others think about all you can praise God for and be glad about Holy Spirit dwell richly in this child tonight abide in them as they abide in you may this child sleep in your peace tonight and rise up in the morning ready to seek you again the book of first Timothy shows us that what a church believes will shape how it lives a church should be known for its integrity and its service to the poor out of its devotion to Jesus as King let that truth sink in as you let your imagination lead you into rest by focusing on Jesus as the Savior of all visualize yourself lying in your bed then let your mind expand outwards to see your house and your neighborhood think of all your neighbors whom Christ also died for now continue to expand your view moving from your town to your state and then country and the world recognizing that Jesus came to save us all let's pray dear God the King eternal the only God thank you for your grace given to all of us sinners your son Jesus came into this world and died for each of us for each person we argue and debate with for each person we compare ourselves to and judge he came to save me the worst sinner of all thank you and thank you for your word that it is for our benefit it is for the benefit of this child who is listening now speak to their heart as they rest in you let the truth in these scriptures give them insight into how they should live fully submitted to you King Jesus so they can glorify you to the world around them forgive them for their sins and the times they missed what your word is all about use these scriptures to build them up into a person of character and integrity in the name of King Jesus amen first Timothy 1 Paul an Apostle of Christ Jesus by the command of God our Savior and of Christ Jesus our hope to Timothy my true son in the faith grace mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord as I urged you when I went into Macedonia stay there in Ephesus so that you may command certain people not to teach false doctrines any longer or to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies such things promote controversial speculations rather than advancing God's work which is by faith the goal of this command is love 
which comes from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith some have departed from these and have turned to meaningless talk they want to be teachers of the law but they do not know what they are talking about or what they so confidently affirm we know that the law is good if one uses it properly we also know that the law is made not for the righteous but for lawbreakers and rebels the ungodly and sinful the unholy and irreligious for those who kill their fathers or mothers for murderers for the sexually immoral for those practicing homosexuality for slave traders and liars and perjurers and for whatever else is contrary to the sound doctrine that conforms to the gospel concerning the glory of the blessed God which he entrusted to me I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has given me strength that he considered me trustworthy appointing me to his service even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief the grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst but for that very reason I was shown mercy so that in me the worst of sinners Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life now to the king eternal immortal invisible the only God be honor and glory forever and ever amen Timothy my son I am giving you this command in keeping with the prophecies once made about you so that by recalling them you may fight the battle well holding on to faith and a good conscience which some have rejected and so have suffered shipwreck with regard to the faith among them are Hymenaeus and Alexander whom I have handed over to Satan to be taught not to blaspheme first Timothy chapter 2 I urge then first of all that petitions prayers intercession and Thanksgiving be made for all people for Kings and all those in authority that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness this is good and pleases God our Savior who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth for there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind the man Christ Jesus who gave himself as a ransom for all people this has now been witnessed to at the proper time and for this purpose I was appointed a herald and an apostle I am telling the truth I am not lying and a true and faithful teacher of the Gentiles therefore I want the men everywhere to pray lifting up holy hands without anger or disputing I also want the women to dress modestly with decency and propriety adorning themselves not with elaborate hairstyles or gold or pearls or expensive clothes but with good deeds appropriate for women who profess to worship God a woman should learn in quietness and full submission I do not permit a woman to teach or to assume authority over a man she must be quiet 
for Adam was formed first then Eve and Adam was not the one deceived it was the woman who was deceived and became a sinner but women will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith love and holiness with propriety first Timothy chapter 3 here is a trustworthy saying whoever aspires to be an overseer desires a noble task now the overseer is to be above reproach faithful to his wife temperate self-controlled respectable hospitable able to teach not given to drunkenness not violent but gentle not quarrelsome not a lover of money he must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him and he must do so in a manner worthy of full respect if anyone does not know how to manage his own family how can he take care of God's church he must not be a recent convert or he may become conceited and fall under the same judgment as the devil he must also have a good reputation with outsiders so that he will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap in the same way deacons are to be worthy of respect sincere not indulging in much wine and not pursuing dishonest gain they must keep hold of the deep truths of the faith with a clear conscience they must first be tested and then if there is nothing against them let them serve as deacons in the same way the women are to be worthy of respect not malicious talkers but temperate and trustworthy in everything a deacon must be faithful to his wife and must manage his children and his household well those who have served well gain an excellent standing and great assurance in their faith in Christ Jesus although I hope to come to you soon I am writing you these instructions so that if I am delayed you will know how people ought to conduct themselves in God's household which is the church of the Living God the pillar and foundation of the truth beyond all question the mystery from which true godliness springs is great he appeared in the flesh was vindicated by the Spirit was seen by angels was preached among the nations was believed on in the world was taken up in glory first Timothy 4 the Spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron they forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods which God created to be received with Thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth for everything God created is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with Thanksgiving because it is consecrated by the Word of God and prayer if you point these things out to the brothers and sisters you will be a good minister of Christ Jesus nourished on the truths of the faith and of the good teaching that you have followed have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives tales rather train yourself to be godly for physical training is of some value but godliness has value for all things holding promise for both the present life and the life to come this is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance that is why we labor and strive because we have put our hope in the Living God who is the Savior of all people and especially of those who believe command and teach these things don't let anyone look down on you because you are young but set an example for the believers in speech in conduct in love in faith and in purity until I come 
devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching and to teaching. Do not neglect your gift, which was given you through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them, because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. 1 Timothy 5 Do not rebuke an older man harshly, but exhort him as if he were your father. Treat younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, and younger women as sisters with absolute purity. Give proper recognition to those widows who are really in need. But if a widow has children or grandchildren, these should learn first of all to put their religion into practice by caring for their own family and so repaying their parents and grandparents, for this is pleasing to God. The widow who is really in need and left all alone puts her hope in God and continues night and day to pray and to ask God for help. But the widow who lives for pleasure is dead even while she lives. Give the people these instructions so that no one may be open to blame. Anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for those their own household has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. No widow may be put on the list of widows unless she is over 60, has been faithful to her husband, and is well known for her good deeds, such as bringing up children, showing hospitality, washing the feet of the Lord's people, helping those in trouble, and devoting herself to all kinds of good deeds. As for younger widows, do not put them on such a list, for when their sensual desires overcome their dedication to Christ, they want to marry. Thus, they bring judgment on themselves because they have broken their first pledge. Besides, they get into the habit of being idle and going about from house to house. And not only do they become idlers, but also busybodies who talk nonsense, saying things they ought not to. So I counsel younger widows to marry, to have children, to manage their homes, and to give the enemy no opportunity for slander. Some have, in fact, already turned away to follow Satan. If any woman who is a believer has widows in her care, she should continue to help them and not let the church be burdened with them, so that the church can help those widows who are really in need. The elders who direct the affairs of the church well are worthy of double honor, especially those whose work is preaching and teaching. For Scripture says, Do not muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain, and the worker deserves his wages. Do not entertain an accusation against an elder unless it is brought by two or three witnesses. But those elders who are sinning, you are to reprove before everyone so that the others may take warning. I charge you in the sight of God and Christ Jesus and the elect angels to keep these instructions without partiality and to do nothing out of favoritism. Do not be hasty in the laying on of hands and do not share in the sins of others. Keep yourself pure. Stop drinking only water and use a little wine because of your stomach and your frequent illnesses. The sins of some are obvious, reaching the place of judgment ahead of them. The sins of others trail behind them. In the same way, good deeds are obvious, and even those that are not obvious cannot remain hidden forever. 1 Timothy 6 all who are under the yoke of slavery should consider their masters worthy of full respect so that God's name and our teaching may not be slandered. Those who have believing masters should not show them disrespect just because they are fellow believers. 
instead they should serve them even better because their masters are dear to them as fellow believers and are devoted to the welfare of their slaves these are the things you are to teach and insist on if anyone teaches otherwise and does not agree to the sound instruction of our Lord Jesus Christ and to godly teaching they are conceited and understand nothing they have an unhealthy interest in controversies and quarrels about words that result in envy strife malicious talk evil suspicions and constant friction between people of corrupt mind who have been robbed of the truth and who think that godliness is a means to financial gain but godliness with contentment is great gain for we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it but if we have food and clothing we will be content with that those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs but you man of God flee from all of this and pursue righteousness godliness faith love endurance and gentleness fight the good fight of the faith take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses in the sight of God who gives life to everything and of Christ Jesus who while testifying before Pontius Pilate made the good confession I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ which God will bring about in his own time God the blessed and only ruler the King of Kings and Lord of Lords who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light whom no one has seen or can see to him be honor and might forever amen command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth which is so uncertain but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment command them to do good to be rich in good deeds and to be generous and willing to share in this way they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life Timothy guard what has been entrusted to your care turn away from godless chatter and to the opposing ideas of what is falsely called knowledge which some have professed and in doing so have departed from the faith grace be with you all God of all I pray for this beloved child tonight meet them now in their sin meet them with your grace I pray that your grace will fill their hearts as they sleep tonight let them feel the weight of your grace for all people help them to be a light in the world one that shines your love let them be the example of your church showing the world that your people are people of integrity without hypocrisy pride or vanity and with love for all and service to the poor out of their devotion to Jesus as King it's in his name I pray amen these words are trustworthy you died for all in our sin fill me with your character more and more as I continue to abide in Christ Psalm 90 12 says teach us to number our days 
that we may gain a heart of wisdom. God's favor rests on us all the days of our life. Each new day is a gift. All of our days are in God's hands. With God's wisdom, we're able to make the most of each and every day to enjoy our life to the fullest. Take a few deep breaths in and out, inviting God's presence into your whole being. When breathing out, let the matters of your day drift further and further away from you. You're so precious to the Lord. He cares for your heart and wants you to live a happy, healthy life. He stores up treasures in heaven for us. Even now, He's thinking of new ways to reward you. He provides us with the wisdom we need to live each day according to His perfect plan. He can't wait to give you the kingdom. So close your eyes and relax your neck and shoulders as you continue deep, slow breaths. Move down to your abdomen, your thighs, your calves, your feet. Feel each one tighten and then relax, telling your body that it's time to rest. Pull your blanket around you. Sink your head into your pillow. Notice the sounds of your home. And then let them fade into the background. Let all distractions just fade away. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the honor of getting to pray for your dear child tonight. Bless this dear one with your peace that passes all understanding. We know that you have created us to do good things, and we trust that you will help us to fulfill the plans you have for us. Lord, let your presence envelop this precious child of yours in sweet and restful sleep. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Listen as I speak God's word from Psalm 9012 once more. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. With every new day, we have numerous opportunities to store up our treasure in heaven. Luke 21, 32 to 34 says, Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. You're not here by accident. God chose you to be alive at this very time in history. He sees and knows the master plan. Our lives are in his hands. We make our choices, but he has the final say. We've been given a choice today and every day. What we focus on determines how we live. Luke 21, 34 says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Living a life worthy of your calling is following in the footsteps of Jesus. To be a Christian is to be like Christ. God's rewards are waiting for you right now. Thank him now for guiding you along your path every day. 
He reaches down to hold you in the hard times. He carries you when you need him the most. He enjoys helping you. He even loves helping you go to sleep. God wants us to enjoy our life on earth. But our life on earth is just a blink of an eye compared to what awaits us in heaven. Picture yourself resting in the arms of the Father tonight. He smiles at you because he knows the great rewards that await you in heaven. Revelation 22.12 says, Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. Imagine that every good thing you do on this earth has a reward in heaven. As your body rests, picture God taking your spirit to heaven with him right now. See yourself walking on a pathway through a gorgeous forest. The air is so clean and fresh. You come to a special place where you see the foundation for a house is being laid. You have a sense of home that warms your whole being. This is the mansion that God is designing for you in heaven. Each brick is being put into its perfect place for all eternity. Jesus himself is the cornerstone that holds it all together. You notice that each brick is a representation of your doing the will of God in your earthly life and producing great fruit for his kingdom. Every time you spoke a word of kindness or showed compassion or even just shared a smile, another brick was laid into the foundation of your heavenly home. Your sacrifice, your hard work, your diligence and perseverance are not going unnoticed. God rewards those who diligently seek him. He rewards those who do the good work of his hands. As the mortar is being mixed up and put between the bricks, you see that it's made from the loyalty that binds your heart to the truth of God's word. God is overjoyed when he sees you denying your fleshly desires and seeking the truth in every situation of life. He is so proud of you every time you let his light shine through you in the way that you treat the people he's put into your care. He will say to you, well done, good and faithful servant, when you arrive in heaven one day. As you watch more bricks being put into the foundation of your heavenly mansion, you also notice that there are new fruit trees sprouting up next to the house. You see a tree with the most delicious looking fruit. The Spirit of God tells you it's called the tree of peace and harmony. You remember a time when you chose to stay in peace and trust the Lord, even in moments. Even moments like these are rewarded in heaven. You feel that warmth? That's God's love shining on you. He enjoys your presence as well, and like a good father, enjoys giving you good things. You're a representation of his holiness and made in his likeness. If there is anything you've been holding in your heart, perhaps some unforgiveness or a grudge against someone else. Bring it now before the Lord and lay it down at his feet. For his burdens are easy and his yoke is light and he will take whatever it is that you surrender to him and make all things new. Now that your burden has been lifted, and you've let go, 
Search your heart and mind for anything else you may need to let go of. Perhaps even some anxious thoughts that are keeping you from sleep. Lay down anything now and ask God to take care of it for you. And now as you rest, you feel lighter. You feel weightless peace as the Lord's joy shines upon you. You're enjoying the peace of knowing that God has great and beautiful things in store for you. And he will continue to give you the wisdom you need to succeed along the journey of life. You're now walking back down the path and you see a little river off to the side. The water looks so inviting and warm as you step into it. Your whole body surrenders to the love of Christ. The water is so comforting and you can sit down and relax in the soft sand at the bottom of the river. Small pieces of gold are shimmering in the sunlight that warms your body. You realize just how happy you are at this very moment. God's glory is shining all around you. And he wants you to know he is so pleased with you. God is proud of you. Rest in his loving care. He will be with you every moment of every day. He will guide you in making good choices. Let your mind and body rest in the peace of God now. God appreciates and thanks you for every act of loving kindness that you make. As you continue to live your life with honesty and integrity, you smile because you know you will be rewarded in heaven. All the good things we do will not go unnoticed by the King of Kings. Every day matters. He has gifts waiting for you every day of your life. Tomorrow when you wake up, you'll feel refreshed and so full of love. God will enable you to find new opportunities to love and serve others. And in doing so, you'll be faithfully rewarded on into eternity. Dear Lord, thank you for reminding us that each day is precious to you. Thank you for always taking care of us and sending your angels to guard us as we sleep. May we enjoy all the gifts you've given us as we make the most of the time we've been given upon this earth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Let parts of your body switch off. Relax your toes. Focus on your legs. Let any tension dissolve away. Feel your lower back and your abs switching off. Now your chest. Feel as the tension melts away. Let your shoulders, arms, and hands relax and shut down. Relax and find yourself starting to drift off. Father God, thank you for new beginnings. I ask that you guide this child of yours in the coming days. 
Help them hear your voice as you guide them in the days, weeks, and months ahead. Thank you for your protection and your wisdom as they make their way through the days ahead. Thank you for your many blessings and the lessons learned from the past. We honor you and give you all the glory. Amen. Listen to the words of Psalm 119.105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. As you travel into unknown days, what an amazing resolution to have God's words light your path. Even coming out of a hard season, picture what it would be like to live with God leading you. Even though you may not have let him lead in years past, it's okay. Because of God's abundance of love and grace, his mercies are new every morning. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Great is his faithfulness. Maybe you're holding on to baggage from your past. Let's go on a journey now. And on this journey, let us unpack all the old baggage. Breathe deeply and slowly throughout this meditation. And let yourself drift off, even if I'm still speaking. The goal is deep and restful sleep. Come with me on this journey. It's a beautiful sunny day, not a cloud in the sky. The flowers have bloomed. The air smells clean as a light wind blows, keeping the temperature not too hot, but not too cold. You're walking on a dirt path surrounded by bright green grass. You look up into the mountains and you see the snow of winter's past. It has begun to melt, creating beautiful waterfalls on the sides of each lush mountainside. As you look ahead, you see a great forest with tall pine trees beckoning you to come in. The aroma of the pine overwhelms your senses and gives you the feeling that something wonderful is about to happen. You look down beside you and at your feet is an overfilled bag. It's so stuffed that the zippers look like they could pop open. On the bag is written the words, years past. You scrunch up your nose in distaste. You don't want to look in the bag. You think to yourself, I have to get rid of this baggage. So you start to lift it up and it's heavy, really heavy. You manage to lug it onto your shoulder and you start the journey toward the pines. As you're walking, you feel a sense of happiness, knowing that by the end of this journey, things are going to be different. Your life is about to be so much better. You have now entered into the pines. You can hear the birds. It's almost like they're singing a song just for you. Hear the sweet song of the birds as they sing to you. Close by, you hear a babbling creek. You know you need water for your journey. You walk over to the river, cup your hands, and enjoy the cool, refreshing water as it touches your lips. Taste the pure water. You grab your canteen and fill it up with a delicious liquid. 
As you watch the water go into your canteen, you're reminded of the verse. Isaiah 44, 3, For I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon your offspring and my blessing upon your descendants. Let that verse sink in. All of a sudden you notice your bag has become lighter. You look down to find that a brick has fallen out of your bag and has sunk to the bottom of the river. There are words stamped on the brick. It reads, Family Issues. No matter what issues came up for your family this year, you're no longer carrying these burdens. A sense of peace fills your mind and body. Now look over to your left and see the creek meander under a bridge. And as you get to the other side, there's a fork in the path with a sign. A decision of which way to travel needs to be made. You know you cannot make this decision on your own. You close your eyes and hear the wind blowing through the pines. You also hear the still small voice that reminds you of Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. As you open your eyes, it's clear to you which path to take. You also notice your bag has become lighter. You look directly behind you and lying in the path is another brick with the word stress stamped on it. You smile to yourself because you know how much stress was a problem for you. Feel yourself breathing easier. You now start down the path that you feel led to go down. As you walk, you notice yourself starting to leave the forest. There are fewer pine trees and the path seems to be getting more curvy. You find yourself having to walk around large boulders and big rocks. Some you can step over or walk around, but some you actually have to climb to get over them. It's not as easy as you hoped it would be. You stop and look up. You see an impressive ram standing on a large rock formation. He's looking down at you as you struggle to get through this section of the path. You watch him as he slowly turns and climbs up easily over the rocks and up the side of a mountain. You're now reminded of the verse in John 16:33 that says, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. You stand there for a moment and dwell on that verse. You take great comfort with Jesus saying that he has overcome the world. Just then, your bag gets noticeably lighter. You hear a brick fall and hit the rock behind you. On the brick, the word trials is stamped on it. Jesus has overcome all your trials and tribulations because he has overcome the world. That brings a smile to your face. You now start to walk further along the path. There are not as many boulders and rocks. 
now the path is so much easier. However, you're starting to get tired. You need to find a place to sit down. As you look ahead, you see a large log on the side of the path. You go and have a seat. This moment gives you a chance to really take in all the beauty of nature around you. You can see several waterfalls cascading down the sides of the tall mountains. You look over and see a family of deer drinking from a creek. You look up and you see an eagle flying overhead. You're taken aback by his wide wingspan and how majestic he looks gliding through the air. Isaiah 40, 29 to 31 comes to mind. He gives power to the faint and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Just then, you feel a sense of strength come over you. You feel completely at rest. You start to get up to continue your journey. As you do, your baggage becomes lighter. You look behind the log and see that another brick has fallen out. This brick has a stamp on it that reads, Exhaustion. You realize how rested you feel. You realize you haven't had this feeling in quite a long time. You now continue your hike. With this newfound freedom from exhaustion, you seem to be able to walk more easily. However, you're stopped in your tracks as you walk around the corner and find that the path is now going up the side of a tall mountain you realize that the next leg of your hike is going to be an uphill. But with your feeling of rest and your lighter bag, you know it won't be so hard. In fact, you're excited to see what this next part of your journey will bring. You start to walk up the hill. As you get higher and higher, you notice how even more beautiful everything looks from being up high. You can now take a moment and look back and see how great God is for bringing you as far as he has brought you. Take a moment now and thank God for all he has done for you. Sure, there have been moments of tribulation but God was always right there beside you. Thank him now. As you finish thanking him, you realize that you still have an uphill climb ahead of you. You're not sure if you want to continue the hard work it will take to climb the rest of the way. Proverbs 16.3 comes to mind in this moment. Commit your work to the Lord, and your plans will be established. As you let that sink in, you feel your baggage suddenly become much lighter. You look down, and three bricks have fallen to the ground. All of them have the word effort stamped on them. With your bag feeling so much lighter, you know that the work it will take to go the rest of the way uphill will be a lot easier. 
you start the walk uphill. You're enjoying this work because it's bringing you more and more pleasure. You're now a lot higher and the views are incredible. What you picture heaven to be like. Take it all in. You notice that you're approaching the top of the mountain. As you get to the top, you see a man standing there with his back to you. As the man turns toward you, you see that it's Jesus. He smiles at you. You feel a great warmth and comfort with that smile. You run to him and hug him. As you are in the arms of the Lord, you feel so much love. You know that the past is behind you. As you and Jesus stand there, he asks for your bag. You hand it over to him. He opens it and pulls out one last brick. The words, your life, are stamped on that brick. You now realize that Jesus is asking if you will give your life to him. You nod. Then Jesus grabs another bag. On this bag it reads, New Beginnings. You put it on. It is so much more comfortable and noticeably lighter than your old one. Jesus motions for you to continue your journey into the unknown. But something is different about this path. It's still got its ups and downs, twists and turns, places you can't see. But you realize that with the Lord's help, this next path will be so much easier to get through. You glance back to take one more look at Jesus. You gasp as you realize that he's walking right beside you. In fact, he has been there the whole time. You just forgot to notice. As you look into his eyes, you know your life will never be the same because you will always remember that he is by your side, walking with you. You then look out at the beauty you're about to enter. And now you have a sense that you don't have to handle all problems that come your way. Jesus will do it. If you feel your pack growing heavy again, you will hand it over to Jesus and carry only what he wants you to. The verse you're reminded of is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. As you walk the unknown paths every day, remember, the Lord is by your side every moment. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for always being there. Now, Lord, bless your beloved child and keep them. Shine your face upon them and be gracious to them. Lift up your face upon them and give them peace. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. Now rest in God's loving arms. Now rest in God's loving arms.
take a quiet moment to be perfectly still before the Lord. Feel the Holy Spirit surrounding you with peace. Inhale and exhale. Now, step onto the shores of the Sea of Galilee. Feel the sand beneath your feet. It is soft and silky, almost like velvet. You bend down and brush the sand with your fingers, realizing that God has numbered each and every grain what a mighty God we serve. The cool waves gently brush the shoreline, then retreat back into the glassy sea. A beam of moonlight illuminates the water, and it glimmers in the night. Ripples of waves travel toward you slowly, washing the sand from your feet. It feels cool and refreshing. The tide recedes again toward the middle of the sea. The gentle lull of the waves mesmerizes you. You watch the ebb and flow of the tide for several peaceful moments. You recall Psalm 107 that says, He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then, they were glad that the waters were quiet, and he brought them to their desired haven. This is your desired haven, the presence of the Lord. Gracious God, how wonderful you are. Every grain of sand is known by you. You cause the moon to shine on the waters, pulling the tides of the sea back and forth. We are in awe of you. Please surround this beloved child with your holy presence tonight. Show them a glimpse of your glory, Lord. For by your glory, the heavens and the earth were made. Thank you for the beauty that surrounds us. Open your eyes to see it and know that you are God. In the precious name of your Son, Amen. Breathe in the beautiful scenery around you, the outline of olive trees, the sound of birds nestling down for the night. Inhale the scent of earth and pine sand and sea. Gaze upon the shadowed silhouette of rising plateaus in the distance. This is the place where Jesus walked. Remain here for a few peaceful moments. Behind you, you hear the words of Jesus, gentle and kind. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him, and he with me. Hear his voice, 
calling, beckoning, inviting. His invitation is for you to dine with him. He has built a fire to keep you warm. The soft amber glow lights his face. And you can't help but gaze into the eyes of your Lord and Savior. Face to face. How can it be? Dinner by the sea with Jesus, the Messiah. There is no better place to be. Enjoy this time of sweet communion with your Lord. Savor every moment. Feel the comfort and assurance that the Lord is with you. He wants to hear from you, encourage you, and speak of eternal things, things so wonderful you can hardly contain them. He says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. There is no deeper contentment, no greater joy, no better satisfaction than being in perfect unity with your Savior. Remain blessed in His presence. Holy God, Please bless this beloved child with the satisfaction of your presence as they bask in the soft glow of your holiness and peace. Speak gentle words into their soul. As they sleep, Lord, remind them of the wonderful things you have done. You have called them by name reached out your hand to receive them and welcomed them to dine with you. Help them sleep deeply, resting in the assurance of your love. Be with them through every hour of the night, washing over them like gentle, peaceful waves. Thank you, Lord for the invitation to remain with you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. In Matthew chapter 11, Jesus said, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. He will give you rest. He will teach you all things. He is your gentle Savior. Find perfect rest in Him tonight. Sit by the fire and learn from him. He has much to tell you about the kingdom of God. His testimony is true. You can trust every word he says. Listen to the Savior tonight. His words of truth and light. Perfect holy, righteous, and just. Hear him, beloved. Hear him and trust. The wood crackles in the fire. The peaceful blaze is warm on your face. You put your hands out to warm them too as you listen to the precious words of the Lord. 
Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water, springing up into everlasting life. Receive the living water Jesus offers you. Drink freely from the spring of life. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Eat the bread that Jesus offers, bread that endures to everlasting life, true bread from the Father above. Dining with Jesus is so much more than food or drink. His presence encompasses your very soul, softening your heart, opening your eyes, and unstopping your ears. As John said in 1 John chapter 1, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you, that your joy may be full. Father God, thank you for sending your Son, the Word of Life, to extend His hand of salvation to us. Fill this listener with truth and peace tonight. Help them know without a doubt that you are God and you are good. Cause them to rest in the light of your love, in the soft glow of your presence. Embrace them in the fellowship of your joy and peace. Remind them that there is no better place to be than in your presence. Help them dream of time spent with the Savior on the shores of the sea, warmed by the light of your love and surrounded by your perfect peace. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Sometimes, life can feel so overwhelming and busy. Spending time with plants and nature will help us to slow down. Tonight, we'll take a siesta in a sunny greenhouse full of tropical plant life and see how well the gardener cares for each and every plant. So take a moment to get cozy, stretch out, or bundle up. Find that perfectly comfortable spot and settle into it. Feel the soft, warm covers over you. Close your eyes and take a deep breath. Let go of all the tension from the day. Sink into the safe, loving presence of Jesus. Before we get started, let me pray for you. Lord Jesus, thank you for this child of yours. Tonight, I pray for your miraculous peace to cover this listener 
as they drift off to sleep. You take care of everything we need. Please give them the rest and renewal they need for the day ahead. As they sleep, I ask that you would bring healing and assurance to your child. Help them to trust that what you say is true. You will provide for them. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Now that you're comfortable and ready for sleep, step into the greenhouse with me. This greenhouse is bigger than the house that you live in, with fully grown trees and paths that wind around in circular garden beds. The glass-paned walls arc into a large dome ceiling high above your head. It is a sunny, cool afternoon outside but the air feels warm and inviting inside this protective glass house. Golden sun drips like honey over everything. On the inside, a warm path of earthy reddish-brown tile leads you through the greenhouse. Both sides of the path are neatly outlined by clean white pavers. Some of the spaces have rich, dark soil where different kinds of ferns and trees grow right out of the ground. Other areas are marked by knee-high flower beds. Terracotta pots of all shapes and sizes scatter around this space, overflowing with bushy plants and flowers. The path ahead of you has been freshly swept. If you listen closely, you can hear the gurgling and splashing of water, the call and response of bird trills, and the hum of the breeze against the glass window panes. You take a deep, cleansing breath, feeling your tension melt away. The misty air holds a fresh green scent, sweetened by the flowers. You look up and see a cluster of palm trees brushing against the glass dome. They stand proud, towering over the shorter trees and the lower flower beds. This is a safe, quiet place. It's a place for us to slow down, to watch things grow, and to indulge in God's incredible creation. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says, And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? Isn't it wonderful how well God cares for you? He will give you everything you need. You can rest knowing that he will take care of every detail. And there's no need to worry about the future. As you walk along the path, little brown birds flit through the trees over your head. You walk through a white trellis arch supporting a bougainvillea tree. Piles of crisp fallen petals crunch beneath your feet. The vines of the tree wrap all the way around the arch, sporting bursts of delicate fuchsia and purple petals. It's an explosion of purple and green over your head and on the ground around you. Stand here in the arch for a moment and trace the path of the vines from the ground, up the side, over the top of the arch, and down elegantly over your head. Like a leafy chandelier, God has clothed each and every flower on this vine with great care. Psalm 65, 
verses 1 through 4 says, Praise is rightfully yours, God, in Zion. Vows to you will be fulfilled. All humanity will come to you, the one who hears prayer. Iniquities overwhelm me. Only you can atone for our rebellions. How happy is the one you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We will be satisfied with the goodness of your house, the holiness of your temple. At the center of the greenhouse is a stone water fountain and a yellow cushioned bench. This bench is long enough and wide enough for you to lie down comfortably if you want to. Four paths spread out from the central point to the different sections of the greenhouse. Water bubbles up from the top and spills down a series of bowls until it lands in the fountain's base. A few old leaves float on the water's surface. You fish them out and toss them into one of the flower beds to decay. Lean over and look into the water. There is a mosaic tile pattern of blue and yellow flowers winding around the bottom. Tiny droplets of spray land on your skin. You picture those droplets like prayers sent up to God. When we feel overwhelmed, we can meet God in his house and spend time soaking in this peace of his presence. The best part of this is that we can meet God anywhere, even in this warm, sunny greenhouse, sitting on the edge of a fountain. In John 14, 27, Jesus tells us, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Before we can settle into sleep, let's check on the plants. We need to weed and prune and water each of them. Let's see how the seedlings are doing. On the far side of the greenhouse, there are two neat rows of wooden shelves and a glass table. Some of those shelves hold extra gloves, spray bottles, watering cans, empty pots of all sizes, and various gardening tools. Big bags of rich soil sit beneath the table. You pick out a pair of pale blue gardening gloves and put them on. These gloves fit nicely and will protect your hands from getting dirty or pricked by thorns. The table next to the shelves is covered by flat black seedling trays. Here and there, baby plants peek their teeny green heads out of the dirt. A few of them are starting to form their first leaves, but they're not yet ready to be moved to pots. These trays of dirt and new seeds must be kept moist, but not too wet. You select a spray bottle from the supply shelf and spray the trays with a light cloud of mist. Water comes out of the bottle with a soft shh, shh, shh. The gentle watering will prevent the seeds from getting dislodged. Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown in the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Three of the pineapple plants on the shelf are ready to be transferred from their pots to the planting beds along the walkway. Unlike most other fruits, pineapples are not often grown from their seeds. They do have seeds, but they are so easy to grow from the cut off top of another pineapple fruit. All you have to do is stick the cut base in water with the crown of leaves sticking up and roots will begin to form. These pineapple plants have outgrown their first pots. 
it's time to set them in the planting beds. One by one, you take the clay pots in your hands, along with a garden trowel, and walk them across the greenhouse to an empty planting bed. You dig three holes into the soft earth equal distance apart. Then, pull a pineapple crown gently from its pot. With your free hand, you loosen the dirt and roots that have begun to tangle. This will encourage the plant to thrive in its new home. Think of all the variety you can find just in the plants of a greenhouse garden. Isn't it amazing? Some of the plants are grown for nourishment. Others have unique healing properties. And still others are grown simply for their beauty and the joy they bring to anyone who sees them. You answer us in righteousness with awe-inspiring works. God of our salvation, the hope of all the ends of the earth and the distant seas. You establish the mountains by your power. You are robed with strength. You silence the roar of the seas, the roar of their waves, and the tumult of the nations. Those who live far away are awed by your signs. You make east and west shout for joy. We can see God's strength and power in the mountains, the oceans, and great big storms. But we see God's great care and attention to detail in the subtle designs in the veins of a single leaf. Now let's take a couple of watering cans from the shelf and fill them up. This greenhouse has sprinklers built in to water some of the plants, but all the pots and raised flower beds need their own special touch. Psalm 65, nine to 10 says, you visit the earth and water it abundantly, enriching it greatly. God's stream is filled with water for you prepare the earth this way, providing people with grain you soften it with showers and bless its growth, soaking its furrows and leveling its ridges. Now, as you drift off to sleep in this beautiful greenhouse, think about the gardener and how well he cares for each plant. Remember how much more precious you are to God and how well he will care for all of your needs. He will leave you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace God gives is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Let me pray for you. Dear Lord, thank you for the way you take care of us. I pray for this listener to have peaceful rest and pleasant dreams. Please bless them, protect them, and give them your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Sleep well, safe in this garden of God's peace. Almost three quarters of American households have pets. They become our furry, fuzzy, or feathery family members. But even if your household doesn't have a pet, you most likely encounter animals in your life, either your backyard bird feeder lures hungry visitors, or you see squirrels darting from tree to tree. Whatever your encounter with animals, there can be no doubt that they are uniquely created by God. Animals even listen to God. In the book of Jonah, we learn that God commanded a great fish to swallow Jonah and then to spit him onto dry land. And then God caused a worm to eat a plant that had grown up to give Jonah shade. In the book of Numbers, in the Old Testament, 
A man named Balaam was acting cruelly toward his donkey when the animal actually spoke to him. Genesis 1, 21 tells us, So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. In tonight's sleep story, God's Amazing Creatures, we'll encounter animals both huge and small in stories told by the people that experienced significant God moments involving those creatures. You'll drift off to sleep with a smile on your face as your heart is touched by the way God uses all his amazing animals to reveal himself to the humans who coexist with them. Whether you're an animal lover or not, the owner of one cat or five, the friend of a single dog or companion to many, let these stories wash away your worries and remind you that God hears you and that he cares for you. And next time you see a squirrel trying to steal food out of the bird feeder, Smile at its wily ways. Before I share these special stories with you, make sure you're comfortable in your bed. Acknowledge the distractions that want to worm their way into your thoughts, and then send them away to be dealt with tomorrow. Close your eyes and take a nice deep breath. Hold it for a few seconds and then release it. Feel the tension of the day begin to drain from your body as you steady your breathing and relax your muscles. Take inventory of your body. Relax the muscle groups in your neck, your shoulders, your abdomen, now your arms and hands your legs and feet. Clench and relax. Invite God's Holy Spirit to surround you tonight, to bring you comfort, and to protect you from all fears and anxiety. As you lay your hand on your blanket, imagine the soft, warm fur of a sleeping puppy or a cuddly kitten bringing you comfort. Continue to breathe in and out. Matthew 6.26 says, Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them are you not much more valuable than they? Psalm 104 verse 21 says, The lions roar for their prey and seek their food from God. Job 12, 7 through 10 says, But ask the animals and they will teach you, or the birds in the sky and they will tell you, or speak to the earth, and it will teach you, or let the fish in the sea inform you. Which of all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all mankind. All creation is answerable to the Creator. We have been given care of the animals, and God uses them to reveal himself to us. Let me pray for you before I begin our stories. Creator God, thank you for all your creatures, from the cute to the incredible, from the armadillo to the antelope. You have given each a unique place in this world. I pray that you would take this listener this beloved child of yours, 
deep into sleep so that they may wake up refreshed and ready to start their day tomorrow. I pray that any worries or fears that they might be carrying would be swept away in the light of your love and care for them. Thank you for our animal friends who become integral parts of our family. And thank you for the wonders of the wild animals who swim in the deep, fly in the sky, and roam the earth. They speak of your glory. Give uplifting and calming dreams to this listener tonight. Assure them of your presence. Wrap them in your peace. May they cast all their cares upon you because you care for them. Guard them. Guide them. Keep them in your perfect peace because their mind is fixed on you. Thank you for always being with us and for always having your eye on us. We love you, Jesus. In your name I pray, amen. Tonight I'm going to tell you special stories about amazing animals who have touched people's lives in unique ways. We're not always looking for God in the everyday encounters we have. Sometimes we just go about our day not expecting anything unusual. But God wants to bless us with His presence. He wants us to know that He's always thinking about us hearing our prayers and caring for our needs whether they be physical or emotional all the stories you will hear tonight are true and they are told by the people who experienced them our first story is called cling to jesus and it's by tracy crump psalm 63 verses 7 and 8 in the New International Version, says, Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. Lightning flashed, thunder boomed, and the electricity went out. After the storm moved through, my husband Stan and I went to check on my elderly parents. Wind had blown down a huge limb, and Stan stopped to drag it to the curb for pickup. When he turned around, two orange eyes stared into his. They belonged to a bedraggled but beautiful gray bird. Its hooked beak opened in silent protest and claws clamped onto the branch. When the bird made no attempt to fly, we texted a picture of it to the director of a wildlife rehabilitation center. She identified it as a juvenile Mississippi kite, a small bird of prey. It's a brancher, she said, old enough to leave the nest, but not yet ready to fend for itself. Put it back in a nearby tree and its parents will return to care for it. Once Stan managed to pry the bird's claws from the branch, he did as instructed. The next morning, the two adult kites swooped in to feed their hungry offspring. The young bird endured a frightening fall and a bumpy ride across the yard, clinging to the only thing it knew for security. What do I cling to when life throws me to the ground? Too often, I look to other people for comfort and refuge. Others may turn to recreation, work, or more destructive diversions such as drugs or alcohol to dull the pain. But I've found that only Jesus provides lasting security, offering the assurance that he will stand beside me no matter what trials and hardships I face. Anything else is temporary. Life often takes me on a bumpy ride. When I turn to Jesus, I find peace and strength to let go of the 
brand I'm depending on and move forward. Psalm 62 verse 7 in the New International Version says, My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Tracy and Stan were there to help this little kite when it was alone and frightened. And in that moment, they could see the love and care that God always gives to them. Lord, thank you for always being there to help us, to hear our cries. Sometimes you have to pry our hands off something we're clinging to in order to help us, to put us where we need to be, to grow. Help us to have loose hands, willing to cling to you instead. Amen. Our next story is told by Judy Ross of Chesapeake, Ohio. She calls it Llamas Everywhere. My husband Tom and I had come up with more than a few crazy ideas in our 29 years of marriage, but this one topped them all. We are not buying a llama, I told him. No way. We had just driven home after spending the afternoon at a huge llama exhibition and show on the Ohio State Fairgrounds. We had gone there for the dog show, where for five years we'd shown our beloved boxer. Roxy was a beautiful champion show dog whom I'd loved as if she were one of our children. She'd drawn us into a life I could never have imagined. Roxy came into our lives when she was a puppy, and everything changed. Summer weekends were spent going to shows across the region. It became all-consuming. For months, we didn't even go to church. That was the one drawback about showing dogs. But I'd so enjoyed it. The competition, the people we met, the time bonding with Roxy. I was sure God understood. Then, at six years old, Roxy was diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumor and died. Nearly a year later, I was still heartbroken. I thought coming to the show would be a way to relive happy memories, but all I felt was sadness. I can't do this, I told Tom halfway through. We left the arena. Just outside the doors was a huge sign. Come see the llamas. Let's check it out, Tom said. I thought he was joking. An hour later, we were still walking past pen after pen of these leggy, furry animals. Tom was fascinated, peppering the farm owners with questions and getting their business cards. The whole three-hour drive back to our 32-acre hillside hobby farm, Tom was lost in thought. Sometimes I feel like we should be doing something more with our lives, he said, as much to himself as me. At last, we pulled into the driveway. Tom announced, I'm going to buy a llama. He'd always been like this, impulsive and full of ideas, wanting to buy the farm when we were just starting out in our marriage, volunteering us to teach Sunday school and then to lead a youth group. Never mind that we had no experience. He just leaped in and trusted God to figure out the details. I was more cautious and liked to weigh all the pros and cons. God gave us brains so we could think things through, right? And I couldn't see anything good about this. Why llamas? And what would we do with them? There's good money to be made in breeding them, Tom said. The breeders mentioned there's a huge demand, and it could supplement our retirement. I was 50. Tom was 52. I was glad he was thinking about our future, but still, llamas? 
It seems too risky, I said. We'd raised a few horses and cattle, not that we'd ever gotten rich off of it. Tom let the subject drop. I noticed he kept all the llama farm business cards on his dresser, though. A couple of months later, he called me at work. There's a llama farm north of Columbus, he said. I want to go have a look this weekend. More than 100 llamas ambled about the farm's rolling fields. Tom was like a kid in a candy store. Was this the future he envisioned for us? Llamas everywhere? We both worked full-time. Tom for a plastics manufacturer, me in the computer department of Marshall University's School of Medicine. Solid, dependable jobs. One llama in particular, a spindly-legged fuzzy brown and white baby, took a liking to Tom. Her name was Emily. She followed him like a puppy. How can we resist, Tom said. Let's just start with her. I still wasn't feeling it. But how much trouble could one little llama be? Okay, I said. You'll need to get two, the breeder added, not so helpfully. They're herd animals. They don't do well alone. Six months later, when they were old enough to be weaned, we brought home Emily and a solid brown male baby named Fabian. We opened the back doors of the trailer and the llamas walked into our freshly mowed field. Emily nosed the grass and began nibbling. Fabian sniffed the air around him. I can't explain it, but something took hold of me. There were just the two of them. Surrounded by open field, their wool sun-dappled. It seemed as if they were exactly where they belonged. As if God had reached down and placed them on our farm himself. Was he trying to tell me something? They're beautiful, I said. They really are, Tom nodded. But he had that faraway look again. What now? I thought. A few days later, I found out. We should take the llamas out to places where folks can meet them, he said. Nursing homes, schools, that kind of thing. I remembered the breeders stressing that it was important to get the word out, to have people interact with the llamas in order to build a successful breeding operation. I hadn't thought we'd start right away, though. I've been praying for a way for us to get involved in some sort of ministry outside of church, Tom said. The llamas could be the answer. They'll be a conversation starter for sure. An animal ministry? I thought about Roxy and all the places we'd taken her. People constantly came up to us wanting to pet her, but I'd never seen it as a chance to talk about God. If anything, the dog show circuit had pulled me away from church, from practicing my faith. I'd regretted that. Now it was as if God was giving us a chance for a do-over. With llamas, of all things. We could call our farm Good News Llamas, Tom said. We can share the good news of Jesus Christ where we go. A few days later, I called the nursing home in our area. They were thrilled to have us visit. The residents' faces lit up when they saw Emily and Fabian. I've never seen a llama in real life, one woman said. She couldn't stop petting Emily. The llamas were as gentle as could be. We didn't talk directly about God, and yet there was no doubt that He was there, working through us, bringing joy and laughter to people. Not long after that, we visited a school. A boy came up to Fabian, a scowl on his face. He was dressed all in black. Everything about him said, leave me alone. 
Yet, he buried his head deep in Fabian's wool, holding the llama tight for nearly 20 minutes. Fabian never tried to pull away. He connected with this boy in a way I never could have imagined. At the end of our visit, a teacher told me that boy comes from a very difficult family situation. I've never seen him show any kind of affection. I found myself spending more and more time with our llamas. And it wasn't just to learn how to keep them healthy and happy. Emily still followed Tom around like a puppy. Every night when he came home from work, she was by the fence, waiting for him. When Emily and Fabian were nearly a year old, the breeder told us we needed to separate them so they wouldn't mate too young. Of course, that meant buying two more llamas so everyone could have a friend. When we finally began breeding them, the babies were so cute I couldn't bear to part with them. So much for our retirement income. Every year we welcomed two or three new llamas to the herd that became part of our family. I heard about all the uses for llama fiber, and from that came an entirely new ministry. Our daughter Mitzi started Woolly Mountain Ministries, speaking of churches and using llama wool and her spinning wheel to share the message of Jesus Christ. I too learned how to spin the fiber into yarn, perfect for knitting and crocheting. I began teaching spinning, dyeing, and felting. We went to more schools and nursing homes, festivals and parades, even the llama show on the Ohio State Fairgrounds, the place where it all began. Our schedules got so busy, we ultimately left our jobs to devote more time to the ministry. The llamas turned out to be a wonderful retirement plan after all. Today we have a herd of 18, including Emily. She's 23 now and still loves meeting people. People are drawn in by the llamas, but they also ask about the ministry's name. What do you mean by good news? They say. I tell them of God's love and how he wants the best for each of us. If only we allow ourselves to trust and go where he leads us. So, God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm, according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Judy could not envision a future that included llamas, but God directed their steps and now the lovely llamas bring joy to all who meet them. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm, according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Lord God, everything you made is good, from the tiniest little baby kite to the huge humpback whale. You use all your creatures to bring you glory. Everything points to you. Thank you for allowing us to hear the stories of these animal encounters that meant so much to others. Help us to appreciate all aspects of your creation and to praise you when we see them. I pray for this listener as they rest now, peaceful and content knowing that you are with them all through the night. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me in hearing these wonderful stories of God's amazing creatures. The prophet Isaiah wrote these amazing words about what the day of the Lord will look like. In that day, the wolf and the lamb will live together, the leopard will lie down with the baby goat. The calf and the yearling will be safe with the lion. 
and a little child will lead them all. The cow will graze near the bear. The cub and the calf will lie down together. The lion will eat hay like a cow. Amen. God's ways are not our ways. As Isaiah 55, 8 tells us, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. We can't understand why God works the way he does, but we can trust that he is good. He is always with us and he never forgets us, even when he seems silent. Tonight's stories will remind you that he loves you so much as you hear the true stories of how he worked in the lives of some of his children. Before we jump into our stories, take a few moments to breathe deeply and let the cares and concerns of your day dissipate. Get comfortable in your bed, turn off your light, and close your eyes. Acknowledge any distractions there might be in your room and let your muscles relax. Breathe in and breathe out slowly as you begin to rest after your day. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for the day that is now ending. I pray that your beloved child will find the deep rest that they need tonight as they hear about your faithfulness and your mysterious ways that we cannot comprehend. May their heart be filled with joy and their mind filled with peace as they sleep. Keep them safe and warm in your arms tonight. It's in the precious name of your son, Jesus, that I pray. Amen. Now, listen as I tell you the stories of some women of faith who saw God do amazing things for them and their families. The stories are told from their perspective, so listen as I use my voice to tell you their story. Our first story is called A Farmer's Prayer, and it's Nadine Fadenhauer's story. In July 1973, when I was 17, a drought struck my family's farm in Burnsville, Minnesota. It began with several days without rain. That was normal for summertime, but the hot, dry days stretched into weeks. Our farm was our livelihood. We counted on the profits from the corn crop to get us through the year, and the corn was dying before our eyes. My father was a man of faith. He prayed before every meal and firmly believed God would look out for our family. Each day, Mom and I would get up, hoping for rain. Each day, Dad would expect it even though there wasn't so much as a wisp of a cloud in the harsh blue sky. Around the one-month mark without rain, Mom, Dad, and I sat down to lunch one day and bowed our heads in silent prayer, as usual. Mom and I looked up, ready to eat. But... Dad didn't move. He waited so long that I asked if he'd fallen asleep. Hold on, he said. I'm not done yet. I looked at his hands, calloused and cracked from years of farm work, his nails permanently stained by dirt. They were clasped together so tightly that his knuckles were white. I'd never seen Dad pray so fervently. I knew it was about the drought. After lunch, Dad returned to the fields, wandering through the yellowing stalks, 
doing what he could to try to save the corn, which was only a couple of weeks away from being ripe enough to harvest. He stayed out there while Mom and I had dinner. I finished my chores, wiping the sweat off my brow, desperate for a break from the stifling heat. I opened every window in the house, hoping to coax a cross breeze. The air was stagnant, save for an occasional hot, weak puff. I sat in our living room, fanning myself and thinking about Dad, a man at the end of his rope. I needed something to distract myself. I looked at my wristwatch. 7.55 p.m. I was expecting a call from my older sister, Celeste, who lived on her own. She had promised a call for an update of the crops after she got home from her church choir rehearsal, which ended at 8 o'clock. Hearing her voice would be a comfort. A sudden boom startled me. The house shook. I jumped up and ran to the window. I stared in disbelief. It was pouring rain. My mom and I ran around the house, closing all the windows. Dad came running in, his shirt soaked, his boots caked with mud, beaming from ear to ear. Look, he said, pointing out the front door. There's no rain anywhere but on our farm. He was right. In the distance, on all sides of our property, the skies were clear. There was a rainstorm only over our crops. Eventually, the rain let up, but not before the corn was saved. Dad said the stalks would be healthy by morning. Celeste called, as promised, and we told her about the miracle rainstorm. You're not going to believe this, she said. We finished choir class a few minutes early. The director asked if anyone had a request for a song we could all sing in praise together. I asked if we could sing, There Shall Be Showers of Blessing. I knew the song well. They were singing right when the rain started. Years later, the events of that day remain my strongest reminder of the power of faith. Dad's dedicated prayer was followed up with a whole choir and God answered with showers of blessing. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Father, again we praise you for your mysterious ways. Thank you for caring for each and every aspect of our lives. We are grateful for your intervention, and we trust you through the trials. Amen. Our last story tonight is a poignant reminder that God is El Roy, the God who sees. He never takes his eyes off you. He never leaves your side. The last story is called One Final Moment and it is Stephanie Neff's story. I sat across from my 84-year-old mother at the Mexican restaurant we often went to after her doctor appointments, watching her try to hide her confusion as she looked at the menu. Mama, you always get the chicken quesadilla, I said. Why don't you order that? Yes, I was just thinking that, honey, she said, trying her best to sound decisive. My heart broke for her. My well-read, intelligent mother, who worked crossword puzzles upside down and conquered cryptic quotes, could no longer understand a menu she'd read countless times before. I'd worked in a nursing home so I knew all too well the ravages of dementia, but nothing could have prepared me to see my mother go through it. One day, Mama might forget where she kept her silverware. The next, a little piece of who she was would be lost. 
I felt like I'd lost myself, too. I couldn't remember the last time I'd taken a nap, read a book, or gone on a date with my husband, Chris, without interruption. From the moment I woke up until I drifted off to sleep, I walked a tightrope of work, home, and attending to every aspect of Mama's life. I juggled the grocery shopping, the bill paying, and the caregivers who came to her home. I set up her meds and took her to doctor appointments. It was hard work, made harder with the knowledge that with each passing day, she was slipping further from me and there was nothing I could do about it. One afternoon, I brought Mama some groceries. She sat in her living room armchair, staring bleakly into space. I can't hear God's voice in my heart anymore, she said. He's forgotten all about me. Her words, so unlike her, stopped me in my tracks. Mama had devoted her whole life to God. She visited missionaries overseas and had been deeply involved in church. Whenever someone in our community was going through something, they'd ask her to pray for them. And of course she prayed for me, often, out loud. I missed Mama's prayers so much. That's not true, Mama, I told her. You might forget things, but God would never forget you. If only I could convince myself. As Mama's dementia progressed, I wondered how God could allow a faithful follower to go through such suffering. Her speech became garbled. She forgot more words than she remembered. Eventually, she could no longer put together a coherent sentence. Where was God's presence in all this? His comfort and reassurance that Mama and I had always depended on. Was Mama right? Had God forgotten her? One evening, Chris and I stopped by Mama's house before going out to a rare dinner. One of her caregivers was there. Mama's face was radiant. When her caregiver went to another room, she approached me confidently. I want to have a conversation with you, she said. Just the two of us. She took my hand and led me to her room. I thought I might be dreaming. We sat down on the bed. She told me I'd been a wonderful daughter, and I told her she'd been a wonderful mother. We talked about her life and her countless blessings. Our conversation went on for about 15 minutes. Mama's speech was coherent. And her old mannerisms, like moving her hands when she spoke, had returned. There was something profoundly renewed about her. She flowed from one sentence to another with ease, completely present. This was no dream. Finally, she bowed her head and said a prayer out loud for me. Then she stared into my eyes for a moment before she spoke. God's been with me this whole time, honey she said. He's been present, even in this. He's going to come soon and take me home to heaven. No one should worry about me because I'll be at peace. I've missed you so much, I told her, giving in to my tears. I've missed me too, she said before taking me into her arms. We hugged for what seemed like forever. Mama never spoke coherently again. Still, that miraculous moment of clarity bolstered me through three more years of caring for Mama until she passed. For in that moment, I understood in the deepest reaches of my soul that God never forgets us. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, 
neither are your ways my ways declares the Lord father God thank you for all your stories of faithfulness and goodness we could go on and on hearing of your kindness to your children even when we struggle even when we don't see the healing of a loved one or a financial breakthrough the way we think we should help us to remember that your thoughts are not our thoughts and your ways are not our ways but you are always good and we can always trust you as your beloved child sleeps tonight keep these promises in their mind you will never leave them or forsake them we thank you and we praise you in Jesus name amen sleep well dear one God is by your side Tonight you will explore a place where old things become new again, a place of restoration and repurpose. Tonight is a visit to an old antique store. As you admire the variety of items and wonder about their value and origin, you will be reminded of the ways in which God restores and repurposes throughout the lives of the saints this day has come to a close and it's time to rest set aside any worries or concerns that you are carrying from your day and take this opportunity to slow down as you prepare to sleep close your eyes and take a slow deep breath let your body relax as you find a comfortable position Express your gratitude to God for another day of life and another night of peaceful rest. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for being with me through another day and thank you for the gift of sleep. Help me to see that even when things are hard or when I seem to have lost purpose, that you haven't given up there is value yet to be found as you bring newness to my life I ask you to bring me peace as I sleep help me to fully trust in you amen so even to old age and gray hairs oh God do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all those to come. Imagine waking up early on a Saturday morning. As your eyes open unhurriedly, you take a slow, deep breath, breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. You point and flex your toes, enjoying the stretch before beginning your day. You feel rested and refreshed after a good night's rest. Instead of your usual list of chores and errands, you have the whole day to adventure, explore, and enjoy. And you know exactly where you want to go. For months, you've driven past an old antique store just outside of town but you've never had the time to stop. You decide today is the day, so you grab your keys, and just before heading out the door, you turn back to grab some cash from the jar on the edge of the counter, just in case you find something you love. You drive to the antique store with your windows down, enjoying a breezy fall day. The morning sun is rising and bringing with it an autumn warmth that perfectly balances the coolness of the morning. As you pull in, you notice just a few cars in the small lot. 
The sun is bright in the sky and you feel the warmth on your skin as you walk toward the entrance. You climb the few small steps up the porch, hearing them creak below your feet. The store looks to be an old house that has been turned into a shop. And the wraparound porch is quaintly covered with little tables and shelves, offering a glimpse of the array of knickknacks you will likely find inside. You pause on the porch and take a moment to admire the different pieces of furniture displayed. There is a tall white wicker dresser near the door. You reach your hand out to touch the wicker noticing a few places where the weaving is particularly worn. Even still, it's lovely. After perusing a few minutes, you head inside. A bell hangs right inside the door, and as you walk in, you hear its lively jingle. There's a small counter by the door on your left, and a white-haired woman sitting behind it greets you with a kind smile and says, Good morning. I'm glad you're here. My name is Ruth, if you have any questions. You thank her and begin to look around. The store smells just as you would imagine, like an old bookstore or your grandparents' basement. It's rustic and dusty in a sentimental, simplistic way. The wood paneling along the walls adds to the nostalgic feel of the space. The lighting is dimmer than most places you would normally shop, and you look up to notice half a dozen or so unique light fixtures hanging from the ceiling, offering light to the lovely little store. You smile as you look at the lights, delighted by the eclectic design of this little shop. As you pause for a moment, you take them in. You see that some are chandelier-like, beautiful and ornate, with gems that dangle, while others are more standard flush lights. You notice one particular light fixture mounted in the front room. It's larger than the others, and it has a beautiful stained glass dome. It's almost three feet in diameter, and the edges of the domes are bronze, with what looks like a gold streaming ribbon along the bottom. Right above the bronze begins the design of the lamp, which, as you look closer, you see a field of wildflowers. The bottom portion of the dome has several different shades of green that serve as the backdrop to the flowers. You notice the darkest green pieces are the stems, and the petals add a vibrant addition to the scene. There are pinks and reds and a few purples and yellows. The sun shines in from the window and catches it perfectly. The different shades complement one another, and with the variety of blues at the center of the dome making up the sky, you see the dazzling scene all together. You realize you've been standing just inside the door, gawking up at that stunning piece. You turn at the sound of Ruth's voice. It's lovely, isn't it? Every few weeks I contemplate pricing it out, but I just can't bear the thought of not seeing it every morning. I'll tell you what. I have owned this shop for nearly 30 years, and that was the very first piece we hung after we remodeled the house into a shop. It has always been my favorite. You realize now that your guess was correct. It doesn't just look like an old house. It really is. 
The remodel inside removed many of the walls, opening the space up, while still leaving room-like spaces that contained different types of items. Like any good antique store, there are tables and shelves, nooks and crannies displaying all sorts of items to admire. You walk to another area of the store and continue your browsing. This room is more cluttered than the others, with shelves stacked side by side. There's a shelf with dozens and dozens of mugs, like the kind you might find at an old diner. You see one that says, Stoltzfus Country Quilt Shop, Ronx, PA. Coincidentally, there is a beautiful quilt in surprisingly good condition hanging on a ladder not far from the shelf of mugs. You know it's unlikely, but you imagine that lovely quilt coming from a country quilt shop in rural Pennsylvania, and it makes you smile. You're about to wander to the next space when something in the very back of the store catches your eye. You instantly set down the trinket you are fingering and walk to the back, completely enamored. You walk past several nooks and the old side rooms that are now opened up, noting to yourself that you can't leave before looking at each and every item but you continue walking toward the back corner. You easily make your way to the back room and you walk right up to the piece of furniture that caught your eye. It's a stunning, ornate, magnificent grandfather clock. Instinctively, you reach your hand out to touch the design etched perfectly down the base of the clock. Now that you're right next to it, you hear the steady tick tock, tick tock, tick tock as each second goes by. You're amazed that it still works and you wonder how old it could be. As you think about the many years this clock has counted second by second, you remember a verse from the book of Psalms Psalm 71.18 says, So even to old age and gray hairs, O God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all those to come. As you stand and look at the grandfather clock, you admire the detail and the complexity. It's tall more than seven feet, and you have to crane your neck to see the details at the top. The clock itself is eye level, and though the glass is slightly faded, it's still intact. Behind the glass, you see the clock ticking. It's framed by a design, with only a small window shown above the numbers of the clock. It's a hand-painted scene and all you can see now is a portion of the moon on a light blue sky. You notice as it ticks that the scene moves slightly. You think for a moment that you wish you could stand there for 24 straight hours to see the rest of the scene unfold. And you wonder again, how many people may have stood and admired this clock how many years has this clock counted while God continued meeting and providing for his people? So even to old age and gray hairs, O oh God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all those to come. Next to the clock is a small sign offering you the information you were wondering about this magnificent clock. You read the information card and 
and learned that it was handmade in Glasgow, Scotland, in the late 1700s. The note also shares that the man who made it was listed among the great watchmakers and clockmakers of the world, a prestige you didn't know existed. You look back to the walnut clock with walnut veneers, cross-hatched design going down the base and neatly carved feet that hold it up a few inches off the ground. In the two and a half centuries since this clock was made, there could have been six or seven, even eight generations who cared for it. And you wonder, you imagine the clockmaker, and you think again of the psalm. So even to old age and gray hairs, O God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all those to come. You imagine God's kindness and goodness to the clockmaker. You imagine him to old age in gray hairs, proclaiming God's goodness to the next generation. And as the grandfather clock looms large in the life of the generations that followed, you imagine God's faithfulness in each of their lives as well, just as you have seen his faithfulness in yours. And you cry with the psalmist, even to old age and gray hairs, O oh God, do not forsake me until I have proclaimed your power to the next generation, your might to all those to come. You think about how special it is to pass on an heirloom from one generation to the next, and you wonder how this majestic clock ended up here at all. Is it not a testament of God's great power? Sovereign over time and space, steadily present in every hour, every minute, every second? You smile at the old clock and continue your way around the store. The next table is a basket full of records and you finger through them. One or two are still in the plastic wrap but most of them are worn at the edges, the cardboard corners folded down and rubbed bare from years of being looked over and being pulled out to play. You see a rack of clothes, and set aside from the stack is an old army jacket with pins and award patches on the sleeve. It's stiff, like it still has a little starch, it's khaki with three buttons neatly placed down the center. You reach forward to feel the buttons, noticing that each one has three small crowns engraved. Another shelf holds dozens of candles, each one a different size, but all the same scent, balsam and cedar. You pick up one to smell it, and the scent reminds you of Christmas. Next, you see a vintage aluminum tidbit tray, the kind with a handle in the middle, one on which you might see pastries at a fancy brunch. It's covered with little square pieces of soap, each of which are individually wrapped. The scents are unusual, like pineapple, cocoa butter, or organic oatmeal. You don't even need to pick these up. You can smell them from where you stand. Next to the tray, on the same table, is an old knitting basket, the kind that stands upright on its own, but can easily fold closed. It's tall enough for knitting needles, and wide enough at the bottom for several spools of yarn. You turn toward one shelf that is covered in 
transferware china. The kind that is made from a pattern etched into a copper plate and then delicately pressed against the china to transfer the design. The ones you see on this shelf are the traditional white china and all the designs in a solid, deep blue. And there is a greater variety than you've ever seen. There are large dinner plates and smaller salad plates that match. There is a gravy boat and a matching cream and sugar bowl set. There are salt and pepper shakers and larger bowls and platters meant for serving. The scenes of this set are a sequence, each more lovely than the next. You think of the detail that has gone into the design and you're astounded by the intricacies they represent. And again, you think of God and how intricately aware he is of your life. You think of the generations that have witnessed God's goodness and you determine to proclaim his goodness to the next generation. So even to old age and gray hairs, O oh God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all those to come. Before you leave, you circle back once more to the old grandfather clock. You ask God to remind you remind you of the prayer from the psalm every time you think of it. So even to old age and gray hairs, O oh God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all those to come. like a grandfather clock that has been cherished for decades or hundreds of little items waiting to be purchased and to bring a new sense of value in a new place. Purpose is found for items like these with every new season of ownership. And so it is with you. New purpose can be found for you in every new season even when you feel overlooked or abandoned, God has not forgotten you. So even to old age and gray hairs, O oh God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all those to come. As your evening ticks by moment by moment, and lead you to the new day. Remember the nearness of God in every part of your story. Heavenly Father, your presence is so dear to me. Thank you for the gift of your nearness and for your faithfulness to walk with me through every season. I hope deeply that even in my old age and gray hairs, I will cherish your nearness like the steadiness of a grandfather clock that is sustained through many seasons. Let my life reflect your steady faithfulness as well. I give you thanks and honor and praise. I love you, Lord. Amen. Rest well tonight dreaming dreams of heaven and resting in God's nearness. If you've been struggling with trusting God, surrendering to his counsel and ways, this Bible meditation will help you refocus. As you listen to the comforting words of the scriptures, you'll be reminded of God's unfailing love in the midst of every doubt or worry. Tonight we'll be focusing on Deuteronomy 30, 16, a verse that instructs us to follow God in all his ways, 
as well as to remember his promise to reward those who do we'll be encouraged to believe trust and act on every command and promise of God please take a few moments to settle into bed make yourself comfortable and take a few deep breaths to help you relax whisper a quiet prayer inviting the Holy Spirit to be with you ask for his presence to be sensed in Jesus name inhale and exhale feel every muscle relax as you center your thoughts on God's Word and his presence tonight now let me pray over you father thank you for being with this listener tonight Holy Spirit you are the breath of God breathe restoration upon your precious one as they prepare to sleep this night you are their healing presence heal them in your quiet love you are their all-knowing counselor and encourager encourage them with quieting dreams and rest this night I pray that no matter where they are in this world and no matter what they are feeling your breath will be upon them your presence will overshadow them your peace will transcend all fear and doubt your goodness will overwhelm them with gratitude and thanksgiving your truth will embolden them with strength your fire will surround and empower them in body soul and spirit in their home finances productivity and relationships please help them to know that you are with them and that you love them deeply Lord I ask that you help this listener experience the freedom you offer when they look to you for answers and guidance instead of looking to the world please help them remain in step with your spirit letting you guide them in every decision in the precious name of Jesus I pray amen let's read what Moses said to his people in Deuteronomy 30 16 in the New American Standard Bible I am commanding you today to love the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments his statutes and his judgments so that you may live and become numerous and that the Lord your God may bless you in the land where you are entering to take possession of it this sounds like a tall order but Moses added this exhortation what God requires is not too difficult for you to follow or beyond your reach he says the answer is not in heaven where you must ascend to find it or beyond the sea where you must cross to receive it instead you will find God's Word very near to you in your mouth and in your heart so that you might obey it imagine you are standing beside a wide river there's no raft or boat the rapids are swift so you can't swim across it somehow you know you must get to the other side but there's no way across that you can see now imagine you're walking through a lush forest of hemlock and cedar trees beauty all around the path ahead disappears into bramble you are blocked by thick branches and underbrush there's no way to pass through this barrier you can't find an alternate path you feel stuck and now imagine you're in a desert 
with untold miles of sand in every direction you are lost which way to go your rations are slim you can't afford to make a wrong decision you must choose in all three imaginary scenes you followed a map but it brought you to a place of surprise confusion bewilderment and barriers sometimes that's what life feels like especially transitions into new seasons or eras a river to cross a forest to penetrate a desert to survive each time you followed what you believed was the leading of the Holy Spirit but it brought you to a place where you were unsure of which way to go the Spirit of Christ led you here but in the midst of your most challenging and precarious situation he seemed to have disappeared or gone silent this moment of transition can feel like a whirlwind something big is on the horizon you can feel it but you don't quite know what changes are yet to come it feels like the very air around you is vibrating with anticipation and if you're honest with some fear and anxiety and confusion like Moses and many of his people you've been through years of trying your best to follow the Holy Spirit's leading sometimes through clear pathways sometimes through misty landscapes sometimes through bramble dry regions fits and fumbles sticks and stumbles but you've always gotten back up scrapes and bruises and scars worn as badges of honor and battles the only thing left to do is to trust to stand to surrender surrendering to God's goodness you followed his lead you honored his instruction you obeyed his word that is where freedom resides he will not abandon nor forsake you he is with you the battle is now his when you walk through the valleys of your life sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees you feel anxious and afraid you remember that God has called you to be faithful even in the midst of the great unknown mysteries of life and as you walk upward upon the higher trails in the mountains the vistas begin to open up and you can look down upon the valley far below all things begin to make more sense from this perspective you get new bearings and gain new understanding from this higher perspective you see the dark woods far below that you walked through you see the daunting river that you've crossed the muddy swamp you got stuck in and now you see the beautiful open fields of grass and flowers you danced in the lake you swam in the soil you planted and harvested in and beyond that you see the challenging canyons you scrambled through and the daunting rock walls you climbed you would have never chosen this journey had you known all the twists and turns but it's yours and no one else's to claim and it got you where you are this day this night surrendering to God's plan his heart his journey brings you freedom obedience to his will brings you liberty everything in the valley seen from this vantage point on the mountain 
appears small and insignificant. That's the perspective of heaven. You realize that the daily humdrum duties and the sufferings of life are somehow used by God to build strength of character and faith. God sees you where you are. He rewards those who are steadfast and faithful to continue on the journey even when nothing makes sense. He will not abandon you. He is always with you and will lead you. God has guided you and led you on this path. This journey, He's faithful no matter what the circumstances look like. You have chosen what is good and right and true. Blessing will follow sometime, somewhere, in this life or the next. Follow God and the kingdom of heaven blossoms before you into a flourishing land and peoples. This is what God spoke through Moses to the Israelites thousands of years ago after they left Egypt and were looking forward to the promised land. God's promises do not come with an expiration date, and so the words that were spoken so long ago have power and meaning for your life this day. Let's read today's passage again. I am commanding you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways and to keep His commandments, His statutes, and His judgments, so that you may live and become numerous, and that the Lord your God may bless you in the land where you are entering to take possession of it. Just like the Israelites, you may feel a bit awed and overwhelmed by this command. That's a natural reaction. But God is asking for a supernatural response to a supernatural instruction. God's work, God's requests, requirements, and commands are all fueled by God's resources and spirit. God, the Father, breathes the Spirit of His Son, Christ Jesus, into you to love Him and to do His good works upon the earth. Surrendering to God's will and ways is what it means to love God. Love is an action of obedience to His counsel and instruction. And loving God through obedience always brings freedom. Every faithful step, no matter how small, will not go unnoticed or unrewarded by our good Father. Sometimes surrender means to trust God for a way to cross the rapid river the dense forest, or the seemingly endless desert. Sometimes obedience is simply standing in faith that God will provide a way forward past an immovable wall or barrier. Your surrender and acceptance of what is before you gives God the space to act and answer in unusual ways sometimes in miracles, sometimes in silence, sometimes in whispers, sometimes in a surprise or unusual gesture from a stranger or loved one. That's what he did for Moses and the Israelites, and that's what he can do for you. Our good Father promises to give good gifts to you, to us all, his sons and daughters, and he will not withhold his Holy Spirit from all who ask, because he is good.
Tonight, as you drift into sleep, meditate on God's goodness. You love Him by walking in His ways and following His word. Obedience to His will. Surrender to His ways, just like the Israelites. He will lead you into a prosperous place in body, soul, and spirit, whatever that looks like for your journey. Now receive this prayer from Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. May you sleep this night with his peace all around you, beside you, over you, under you, within you. May you dream the dreams of heaven and be filled with rest and strength for the day ahead. Remember, you are loved beyond measure and without end. It is so. Amen. Before we begin our journey to the reservoir, take a moment and prepare yourself for sleep. Turn off your lights and find a comfortable position in bed. Adjust your shoulders, moving them gently as you nestle in. Make sure you are cozy and comfortable, allowing your mind to fully rest as you go to sleep tonight. Consider any distractions that might be pressing for your attention as your day comes to a close. Ask God to help you set those aside, knowing that He is sovereign over all. As you sleep, trust that God is in control, and anything fighting for your attention can be dealt with tomorrow. Remember the comforting words of Psalm 121, verses 3 through 5. He will not let your foot be moved, he who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. Rest confidently, knowing that the God of Israel is watching over you too. Dearest Heavenly Father, our God of hope and peace, I come to you tonight on behalf of your child, this child whom you love and in whom you are well pleased. I ask that you would bless them tonight as they rest. Bless their mind as they lie down to sleep, granting them the gift of a peaceful, undistracted mind. God, I know that there are likely many things fighting for their attention taking their affection and devotion away from you and discouraging them as they grow weary. But I know they desire to walk with you and to follow your leading. Would you strengthen them in this desire? Help them to see that you are at work in their life. Remind them that hope is a promise and that through faith and confidence, that you are working in their life. They can find strength and renewal. Remind them of the promise of Isaiah 40, verses 30 and 31. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary, they will walk and not be faint. Amen. You're standing on a path that runs alongside the Ford Building. 
This English Gothic style building looks more like a chateau. It was built over a hundred years ago, made possible by the generosity of its namesake, Henry Ford. A reflection pool sits perfectly in the courtyard of the Ford building. You walk closer where you see the old multicolored stone reflected in the serenely still water. The deep blue of the sky is reflected too, along with clouds that look more like piles of cotton candy. You walk all the way up to the reflection pool, crouching down to dip your fingers into the cool water. And you are surprised at how shallow the reflection pool actually is. The chateau-style stone building forms a U-shape with the reflecting pool in the courtyard space. The building itself varies from one floor to two and even three and four floors at various points. There are arches in nearly every window and down the open hallway on the short side of the building. The arches are painted white, as is the mortar holding the stone securely in place and the arches stand out crisply against the dark stone. You pause for a moment to imagine the thousands of students who have walked these halls and sat in this courtyard over the past 12 decades. The stories that have been told, the time spent, how much purpose and use has been found in these spaces. As you walk away from the Ford building, you decide it is time to head up Lavender Mountain on your journey to the reservoir. Lavender Mountain is located three miles up from the main campus where you began exploring. You are lucky to catch a ride on a golf cart that serves as a shuttle offered by a staff member who helps keep the grounds of the campus pristine for travelers like yourself. The kind elderly gentleman who drives you up points out little paths along the three-mile stretch, sharing his own stories from the decades he has spent caring for these woods. When you reach the end of the three-mile drive, he drops you off at a lodge, just before he drives away to return to his groundskeeping work. He invites you to make yourself at home in the lodge, welcoming you to hot coffee or a cool glass of water, if either suits your desire. The hospitality is a hallmark of the generous Southern culture. You offer a smile of thanksgiving, and he drives away. You can't help but first take a few moments to admire the stunning architecture of the mountain campus. It is as beautiful as the buildings you first explored, yet different in nearly every way. You learn these buildings were built to reflect the architecture of a French manor, the buildings are tall, all brick, and neatly painted white. The brownish-orange roofs are steeply angled. They are regal, and yet simple. You learn that these buildings were built for, and long used as, a dairy farm. And you imagine the glory of cattle, enjoying the vastness of this lovely mountain. It reminds you of another psalm. In chapter 50, verses 10 and 11, where the psalmist, writing from the perspective of your majestic God, writes, For all the animals of the forest are mine, and I own the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird on the mountains, and all the animals of the field are mine. One of the first things you see at the start of the trail is an old mill. It sits atop a stream where water still flows. You notice a brass sign with an inscription and walk closer to read more about this surprising structure tucked up the mountain. From the sign, you learn that this old mill was constructed in 1930 and was used to produce cornmeal for the people who lived on the mountain. The iron hub in the center of the wooden wheel was a gift to the miller and was moved to this spot under the direction of Henry Ford. 
The mill itself is boasted as one of the largest in the world, with a diameter of 42 feet. You admire the stone structure built to support it, along with the little stone house-like space built right next to it, where you imagine much of the work was done during its years of operation. There is one more thing of note on the sign, indicating its purpose and history, and you learn that the water flowing in the stream you stand next to is water from a reservoir. You pause for a moment, recognizing the value of all that is stored up in the reservoir. And you ask God to give you a heart that stores his faithfulness the same way. God, we give you glory for your goodness and your unending kindness. Help us to see more of you. Help us to store up hope to draw in times of need. You follow a trail that leads you up toward the reservoir. You pause briefly to give thanks to God for a beautiful day. The sun is shining brightly in the sky, and the warmth feels comforting on your cheeks and shoulders. It is a welcome dichotomy to the cool, consistent autumn breeze. The path begins with a steady incline and soon begins to curve. You follow the curve and find yourself quickly tucked away on the lovely mountain trail. Your favorite part of fall is now in full view. The changing leaves are vibrant and varied. While you noticed some degree of color at the bottom of the mountain, now you see it covering the trail of trees. You notice several types of oaks, large, looming, and dense. They fill the forest with different shades of orange and bright reds. And there is your favorite, the yellowing elm that looks like sunshine falling as the breeze claims dozens of leaves and drags them to the ground. You see the copper color of the changing pine needles and the steadiness of the evergreen creating the backdrop and causing the contrast you find so delightful in the leaves that change. As you walk, you delight in the fact that there is beauty in change. While you don't always like change in your own life, you remember now, as you admire the changing leaves, that God has a purpose in every season, even here, even now. You consider the ways that change has brought trials and uncertainty. You continue your hike on the lovely trail experiencing the peace and beauty of birds chirping and leaves rustling beneath your feet. You continue admiring the leaves and take time to appreciate the variety of shades you have seen. Shades of orange, yellow, and red found as you journeyed on the trail. Although from a distance the colors seem to be the same, up close, when you pick up fallen leaves from the ground and compare them to others you have kept along the walk, you see it clearly. They are different, nuanced, ever-changing even when falling from the very same tree. The path seems to be curving again, and with this curve you see a break in the trees. You feel a spring of hope inside you that, perhaps, this curve is the last on the path to the reservoir. As you come around the corner, it's clear. You have made it to your journey's destination. You stand in admiration as you gaze upon the reservoir. It is just as beautiful as you imagined it would be. The reservoir is vast, covering 55 acres of Lavender Mountain holding millions and millions of gallons of water. As you stand from your spot on the trail, looking out over the reservoir, you find it hard to conceive such an incredible amount. You consider how, for over 100 years, this reservoir has provided water for the many who live on the mountain. You consider how it has sustained life and provided renewal 
how it has offered security and nourished plants and animals. This vast collection of water has been filled and refilled over and over, and without fail, it has been drawn upon for nourishment and sustenance. Once again, you imagine what your life would be like if stored within you was a reservoir of hope. You consider how you could offer faith and confidence and trust in God to those who were down and in need of strength. You could offer it to yourself, too. Looking to God in times of need to find endurance that sustained you through trying times. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Picture the reservoir of hope that God is deepening in your life. He has always provided for you in the past, and imagine how these experiences can fill your reservoir with confidence that God will be faithful again. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for being a God of hope. In a broken world where there is so much that needs to be made right, we look to you in hope, believing that you are still at work to renew and restore all things. Please help this precious listener to keep their focus on you, not just when things are going their way, but when times are hard. Help them to trust in you, their gracious God. Thank you for the gift of sleep. Help them to rest well tonight, that tomorrow they may rise and live their life to bring you praise. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Look to God for hope in times of trouble. Lean on Him when the challenges of life are overwhelming. Store up experiences of His faithfulness like a reservoir, and your hope will never run dry. Abide in Christ. The God of the universe is protecting you and taking care of you, like a loving shepherd watching his sheep. God will always provide for your every need. You have no reason to worry. Long ago, Jesus told his followers, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. In today's story, we'll travel 2,000 years back in time to a Judean hillside as Jesus talks to his followers about worry and about God's providence. As you prepare for today's story, get comfortable. Let your head sink slowly into the pillow, stretch out your arms and legs, and let your muscles relax. If something's not right, then simply pause the Abide app and come back in a few moments. Finally, choose your favorite background music on the app. If you fall asleep during the story, that's okay. The app will stop on its own. The God of peace is protecting you and providing for you. Lay your burdens before him. Rest in his promises. Join me as I pray for you. Dear Father, you are the creator of all that's good, of love, joy, and peace. But too often, God, we worry about the future. We don't have peace in our lives because we're focused on what we don't know. Too often, our eyes are not on you. Too often, we're worried and anxious. God, we lay our troubles before you now. Help us trust you. Give us peace in the middle of trials in our lives and troubles around the world. 
grant this child of yours a wonderful night's sleep and dreams about your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. As you keep your eyes closed, imagine walking through the countryside of Judea in the days of Christ. It's a day far removed from our cluttered lives. There are no cell phones, no computers, no video games, no cars. It's just you and God and his creation. Oh, and a few hundred other followers of Jesus. You're one of those followers, but it doesn't seem crowded. Everyone around you is patient and happy and full of cheer. It's as if they've waited all their lives for this moment. It's as if their people have waited centuries for this time in history. No one's in a rush. No one is pushy. They're savoring every second. A mother and her young son are in front of you, laughing. The boy, he appears to be about five, turns around and gives you an innocent wave. You smile back. Near them is a short, gray-haired elderly woman. She asks the question everyone else is thinking. Is he the Messiah? No one answers, but you've heard enough stories about Jesus healing the sick and giving sight to the blind that you've already formed your opinion. He claims to be God's son, and you believe it. At the head of the crowd is Jesus himself, surrounded by Peter, James, and John, and the other disciples. He's led his followers to an area near the Sea of Galilee. It's a beautiful day, and you're enjoying the walk. It's warm and mostly sunny, with only a few white, wispy clouds high overhead. They're moving ever so slowly across the sky, as if they too are hanging around and watching Jesus, wanting a glimpse of the Messiah. The warm sunshine massages your skin, and a cool breeze off the Sea of Galilee ensures you don't get too hot. The breeze carries with it a dozen earthy aromas, water and dirt and freshwater fish, and even the unmistakable scent of wildflowers from the nearby shore. To your right, you spot two fishermen in a small sailboat, pulling their net up from the Sea of Galilee. They've caught perhaps a dozen fish today, and you watch as they carefully pluck each one from the webbing. Suddenly, one of the fishermen looks in your general direction and motions to his friend, who looks your way too. You quickly realize that they're not looking at you, but at Jesus. Both men rush to the back of the boat and grab their paddles. They hurriedly place them just under the surface of the water and begin rowing to shore. They're wanting to see Jesus. And if they hurry, they will. Up ahead on your path, you spot a squirrel, searching for food within the rocks. It's cleaning its face, oblivious to the crowd around it. You hear a joyful child's voice, commenting on the squirrel's bushy tail and furry ears. All of a sudden, the squirrel dashes away from you and toward the front of the crowd. Perhaps it's chasing an insect. Or maybe it's just like those fishermen, and it wants to see Jesus too. A few minutes have passed, and Jesus has led everyone to a hill overlooking the Sea of Galilee. It's filled with large and small boulders alike, with green grass growing everywhere else. Please, gather around, he tells the crowd. He's sitting halfway up the hill on a large flat rock, underneath a tall juniper tree. The hill is spacious enough to give everyone plenty of room. Just as important, it's quiet enough so that anyone in the crowd can hear. You find a small boulder to sit on to listen to Jesus. He's about seven long steps directly in front of you, although the twelve disciples are the closest to Jesus. Peter is sitting on a rock to your right, He's laughing and talking to Andrew, his brother. Jesus is patient as everyone continues to find a place to sit. 
An older woman sits down to your left in an empty spot of green grass. She appears to be in her 60s and she begins chatting. Her husband, she tells you, is a farmer. Things have been tight lately during the drought. Her brow is filled with wrinkles. She looks anxious. It hasn't rained in days, she says. I'm worried. She asks you if you think Jesus is the Messiah. You smile at her and give an approving nod. A hush quickly falls over the crowd. Jesus is speaking. Blessed are the poor in spirit, he says, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are you when others revile you, and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Jesus has been speaking for about 15 minutes. You're struck by his calm demeanor, his knowledge of scripture, his love for the people. Above all, you're struck by his wisdom. He's unlike any rabbi you've seen. His words seem as if they're straight from God himself. Your mind begins drifting as you think about Jesus' role in your life. A thousand questions swirl in your head. If Jesus is the Messiah, then what does that mean for your future? What does it mean for your people? Is he the answer to every problem in your life? Is he God? Suddenly, Jesus looks straight at you and smiles. He continues preaching, but you think to yourself, was he reading my mind? Did he know what I was thinking? Whatever the case, you continue listening. No one can serve two masters, Jesus says, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds, he says, pointing to a few sparrows on the tree limbs above him. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? How they grow, Jesus says, pointing to the valley below. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. 
Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. An hour has passed. Jesus has finished preaching. He and his disciples are huddled together further up the hill, about 20 paces from you, straight ahead. Some of Jesus' followers have walked back to their villages. Others, though, are still gathered on the hillside in groups of two or three, discussing this Sermon on the Mountain. The elderly woman who sat to your left is one of those who has hung around. She's smiling now. Her demeanor has radically changed. She's no longer worrying. She approaches you with tears of joy and shouts, The Lord will provide. The Lord will take care of us. She points to the western horizon. A storm is building. A cool wind is blowing your direction. Much needed rain is on the way. You look up at Jesus and his followers, who are also looking at the growing storm. He briefly glances down at you and smiles. Tears of joy stream down your face as you recall Jesus' words. Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon, in all his glory, was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. As we transition back to the present day, let's meditate on Jesus' promise to his followers. As you relax and fall asleep, listen again to the words of Christ. I will pray for you throughout the passage. Remember, God will provide for your every need. Jesus said, Do not worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to Him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Let me pray for you. Father, your word tells us that we are more important than the birds of the air. Genesis even says we are the pinnacle of creation. That's because we are made in your image. You sent your son to earth to die for the sins of humanity. We affirm your word. I pray for peace for this child of God as they fall asleep. Jesus said, Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Father God, we know you care for your creation. You are the master artist, the birds of the air, and the lilies of the field, and the colorful wildflowers. They're all just a small part of your masterpiece. They don't plant or harvest or store food. 
and yet you take care of them. They're never worried or anxious, and yet you always provide for them. Your word tells us you already know our every need. We praise you for who you are, promise keeper and provider. We love you. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Father, we lay our burdens before you, and we thank you for everything you have given us. I ask that you will grant this child of yours a wonderful night's sleep and pleasant dreams. It's in Christ's name that I pray. Amen. Listen once again to the comforting words of Jesus, the creator of the universe and the provider of everything you need. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon, in all his glory, was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying, What will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your Heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and He will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. The Savior of the universe is watching over you. He's protecting you. He'll provide for your every need. You have no reason to worry. He's taken care of you in the past, and He'll take care of you in the future. You are far more important to God than the birds of the air or the lilies of the field. You are a child of the living God. Just as a loving mother or father takes care of a helpless infant, God will take care of you. Trust in His promises. Rest in His peace. Let me pray for you. Dear Father, your word tells us that when we seek your kingdom first, you will give us everything we need. Father, we are seeking your kingdom. We want to know you more. We want to abide in your presence. I ask that you will grant this precious child of yours pleasant dreams and a peaceful night's sleep. Help them to wake up refreshed, ready to serve you another day. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. In tonight's story, In the Quiet Place, we will feel the benefits of deep rest and darkness as we see how God created nature to enjoy times of hibernation and dormancy, how covers of snow keep seeds warm so they can germinate. Maybe you have a hard time turning off the lights, quieting your mind, letting go of the things that still need to be finished, accepting the gift and the goodness of rest. Tonight, we're going to meditate on all the new life offered by God in the dark, quiet moments when we finally surrender and accept, even embrace 
the rest he gives us. In John 12, 24, Jesus says, Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. When we experience the dormancy, it may feel like death. But you will see tonight how God is at work, even in the darkness. He has a plan even in the midst of winter to bring new life. Before we begin our story, make sure you're comfortable. Adjust the lights or the blankets if you need to. And let's take just a few minutes for progressive muscle relaxation to get your body ready to sleep. We're going to tense muscle groups one at a time, holding the tension for about five seconds, then exhaling and letting that muscle group fully relax for 10 seconds before moving on to the next muscle group. Research has shown that this technique offers a range of benefits, including pain relief and better sleep. It may also reduce migraines and systolic blood pressure. Begin by lifting your toes upward, tensing your muscles. Hold. Then release. Now, pull your toes downward. Hold. Then release. Next, tense your calf muscles. Hold. Then release. Move your knees toward each other. Hold. Then release. Squeeze your thigh muscles. Hold. Then release. Clench your hands, hold. Then release. Tense your arms, hold. Then release. Squeeze your buttocks. Hold. Then release. Contract your abdominal muscles. Hold. Then Release. Inhale and tighten your chest. Hold. Then exhale and release. Raise your shoulders to your ears. Hold.
then release. Purse your lips together. Hold. Then release. Open your mouth wide. Hold. Then release. Close your eyes tightly. Hold. Then release. Lift your eyebrows. Hold. Then release. Let your whole body relax, warm and loose, as you rest in safety. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8 says, For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. Now is the time to rest. Let yourself fall into a deep sleep confident that more is happening in quiet stillness than we can understand. Be like plants and animals in the middle of a long winter, waiting, resting, storing up strength, gestating new life. Be like a seed in the dark earth, resting until its time comes. Let me pray for you as we begin. Heavenly Father, we're coming to you now, grateful for the gift of rest, grateful that you've called us to trust you and that you are abundantly trustworthy. Right now, we're giving over to your control all the things that are still busying our minds, the things left on our to-do lists, the worries about things we can't control, the anxious thoughts that want to keep us up, we're giving them all to you. We're believing that you will watch over us in all that concerns us while we rest. Thank you, God. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Speaking of his death, Jesus said, Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Listen again, this time in the message translation. Listen carefully. Unless a grain of wheat is buried in the ground, dead to the world, it is never any more than a grain of wheat. But if it is buried, it sprouts and reproduces itself many times over. Times of darkness and quiet, moments when all life and activity seems to have ended, these are the moments when life can truly begin. Jesus himself is our model. As you settle under your blankets, picture yourself like a seed in the dark earth, still, quiet, dormant, carrying life within you resting until it's called forth. Let your breath grow deep and easy as you settle in here. Breathing in, God, we are grateful for the dark. And exhaling, even as we anticipate the light. Inhaling, God, we are grateful for the dark. And exhaling, even as we anticipate the light. Let's take a walk through a winter landscape, 
and imagine what's happening underground. Winter can seem long. The landscape is muted, covered in blankets of white snow. It crunches underfoot. Trees barren of leaves stretch toward the sky. The landscape feels emptier than usual, spacious. At the edge of the forest, you see evergreens as well as bare-branched deciduous trees. The sun is already low. In winter, the days are short while the nights stretch on. God created seasons. God is in these quiet, dark times. And we can learn about our own lives from watching the rhythms of the earth. Maybe one of the lessons winter has for us is a reminder that new life is always preceded by a season that seems quiet. That darkness itself is rich with life. That resting is required for all of us, from the trees to the turtles, the gardens to the woodland creatures, if we are to endure. God, thank you for showing us through your creation the way to rest. As your child nestles into bed now, choosing to believe that you will never sleep, but are always watching over them. Bless them with easy sleep, deep rest, sweet dreams, and restorative quiet. Ready them for new life as they trust in you to work and watch over them. Bless them as they sleep. In Jesus' name, amen. Seeds and flower bulbs rest dormant in the earth during a long winter, waiting for the right moment to emerge toward the sun. As you walk, you imagine where they might be laying, deep underground. Maybe there will be a line of daffodils or tulips emerging by the fence in a few months. At the edge of the woods, you think of the animals who live here. You find a path and enter in. Some animals also hibernate for these months. You picture a black bear. She was ravenous and busy at the end of summer, eating all the blackberries and raspberries and huckleberries she could find. She'd eat for up to eight hours a day. Not just berries, but also savory snacks like swamp thistle and jewelweed, yellow jackets and ants, hazelnuts and hickory nuts. Her body told her to keep eating, and she did. Right up until the weather changed. Then, she dug herself a den beneath a fallen tree, one that fit the contours of her body, and raked grass and bark over her. Nestled safe, she closed her eyes and let her muscles relax. Her body went limp, and for months she dreamed. Her body takes care of her as she rests. All those nuts and berries fuel her sleep, and something else too. They fuel the life that's growing inside of her. Two cubs, growing bigger day by day. Eventually, she'll deliver them, without even waking up. For their first weeks of life, they'll live outside her body as much as they lived inside it, taking all their nourishment from her, cuddled against her warm body, until her summer stores of food have melted away. Then she'll finally wake. She'll wake hungry. She'll open her eyes and see what was born into the world while she rested. Her babies, full of life and ready to explore the fields and forests. Those fields and forests will be ready too. Buds on branches, bright green shoots coming from the ground. Early wildflowers peeking out across the meadow. Birds returning to their homes after a winter in the south, filling the air with song. All this beauty came from the darkness, from the waiting and resting. And God will grow good things in you as you rest in the darkness tonight. He will replenish your strength, restore your energy, and fill you with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, 
goodness, gentleness, and self-control, bringing forth life even as you sleep. Let me pray for you. God, you arranged the seasons. You declared that some times are for resting and other times are for activity. In your wisdom, you call all these seasons good. Now is the time for sleep. Grant to your child the gift of deep, restorative rest, the kind of rest that leads to new life emerging when they wake. We ask this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Sink deeply into sleep as I read Jesus' words from John one final time. Listen carefully. Unless a grain of wheat is buried in the ground, dead to the world, it is never any more than a grain of wheat. But if it is buried, it sprouts and reproduces itself many times over. Holy Spirit, dwell richly in this child tonight. Abide in them as they abide in you. May this child sleep in your peace tonight and rise up in the morning ready to seek you again. Thanks for listening to this Abide Sleep Story. Tonight's meditation of faith-filled life is written to usher you into deep, restful sleep as you dwell on the life of faith into which you have been called by God. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, is filled with stories of people who have lived lives of faith. It tells of the things they trusted God for, even when they could not see a way through themselves. That same faith and that same faithful good God is available to you. All you need to do is grasp it and then rest in it. So as we begin, settle into your bed and take a slow, deep breath. Feel your heart rate begin to slow. Relax your neck muscles and your shoulders. Clench and unclench your fists. Keep breathing slowly and deeply. Then as you exhale, release the worries and burdens that you have carried with you today. Now is the time to let God renew your strength. Let me pray for you. Dear faithful Father, I thank you for your care for each one of us. As your precious child sinks into deep sleep tonight, cover them in the assurance of your love and your presence. If they wake during the night, let your whispers of love cause them to drift quickly back to sleep. Remind them that you are always with them and that you will never leave them. Let them be confident in their faith, no matter how small, because you are big. Even a mustard seed of faith can do great things because that faith is in you. Hold them closely in your arms tonight, Lord, for they are your precious child. It's in your holy name that I pray. Amen. Imagine walking into a room where there are hundreds of people all sitting on chairs. They're laughing and talking. Some are even singing a song of praise to God. There are lots of chairs still left. They are humble-looking chairs, but obviously comfortable as they are very much like the ones everyone else is sitting in. There are slight differences, maybe in the shade of the wood or the height of the legs, but they are all fundamentally the same. They are sound. They are reliable. They can be trusted to hold up the one sitting in them. As you look around, wondering what chair you should choose, you notice some really elaborate looking chairs. Some look like thrones. They are softly cushioned and decorated all over with glittering gold and gemstones. Your eyes are glued to them. That's the kind of chair you want. It's very flashy. It must be very comfortable. 
In fact, you're pretty sure you've heard about others who have sat in this kind of chair. You're sure it's the kind of chair that will hold you firmly for years to come. Something you can really trust. And so you head to one. It's actually up on a high dais, so you have to climb some steps to get to it. Once you climb the steps, and boy, there were more than you initially noticed, you have to input a code into a keypad on a gate that surrounds the chair. You hadn't really noticed that gate before. It takes you a while to figure out what the code is. Nobody has told you the secret. But man, you really want to sit in that chair. Finally, you figure it out and the gate opens. Then you notice that you have to carefully walk over some stepping stones crossing a turbulent river to actually reach the dais. It didn't look this hard from down below, but you're determined to get there, so you carefully tread across the stones. Finally, you reach the chair. You sit, anticipating the comfort of the seat, but to your utter dismay, it completely collapses, dumping you on the ground. Chagrined, you look up to see Jesus standing before you and reaching for your hand with a smile on his face. When you reach out to take his hand, you understand. The grandeur of what you put your faith in didn't matter. The fanciest chair won't hold you if it's not strong. It's not the amount of faith you have that matters. It's what you put your faith in that does. And so you let Jesus lead you to one of the humble, rough-hewn chairs. You join the throngs of people who came in the room before you. They appear confident and happy, fitting comfortably into the chairs they have been in for many, many years. They never wear out. They never let them down. They hold them firmly through all that they do. No analogy is perfect, of course. Our God is bigger than a chair. But the truth is still applicable. You can have the largest amount of belief ever that something unreliable will hold you up or the smallest amount of faith in the God of the universe, and that grain of faith in the Almighty God will make all the difference. As you continue breathing deeply and slowly, listen to the words of Hebrews 11 from the New Living Translation. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. It was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man, and God showed his approval of his gifts. Although Abel is long dead, he still speaks to us by his example of faith. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God, who warned him about things that had never happened before. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world, and he received the righteousness that comes by faith. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. And even when he reached the land God promised him, he lived there by faith, for he was like a foreigner, living in tents. And so did Isaac and Jacob, who inherited the same promise. Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. 
It was by faith that even Sarah was able to have a child, though she was barren and was too old. She believed that God would keep his promise, and so a whole nation came from this one man who was as good as dead. A nation with so many people that, like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore, there is no way to count them. All these people died, still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. They agree that they were foreigners and nomads here on earth. Obviously, people who say such things are looking forward to a country they can call their own. If they had longed for the country they came from, they could have gone back. But they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, even though God had told him, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. It was by faith that Isaac promised blessings for the future to his sons, Jacob and Esau. It was by faith that Jacob, when he was old and dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and bowed in worship as he leaned on his staff. It was by faith that Joseph, when he was about to die, said confidently that the people of Israel would leave Egypt. He even commanded them to take his bones with them when they left. It was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. They saw that God had given them an unusual child, and they were not afraid to disobey the king's command. It was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. He thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking ahead to his great reward. It was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He kept right on going, because he kept his eyes on the one who is invisible. It was by faith that Moses commanded the people of Israel to keep the Passover and to sprinkle blood on the doorsteps so that the angel of death would not kill their firstborn sons. It was by faith that the people of Israel went through the Red Sea as though they were on dry ground. But when the Egyptians tried to follow, they were all drowned. It was by faith that the people of Israel marched around Jericho for seven days, and the walls came crashing down. It was by faith that Rahab the prostitute was not destroyed with the people in her city who refused to obey God, for she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. How much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions, quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put the whole armies to flight. Women received their loved ones back again from death. But others were tortured, refusing to turn from God in order to be set free. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Some were jeered at, and their backs were cut open with whips. Others were chained in prisons. Some died by stoning, some were sawed in half, and others were killed with the sword. Some went about wearing skins of sheep and goats, destitute and oppressed and mistreated. They were too good for this world, 
wandering over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. All of these people earned a good reputation because of their faith, yet none of them received all that God had promised. For God had something better in mind for us, so that they would not reach perfection without us. Ordinary people serving an extraordinary God. It's not the size of your faith that matters. It's the one you put your faith in. The one who created the world and holds it all together. The one who loves you unconditionally. Let his Holy Spirit fill you with all the faith that you need to live a life pleasing to God. Because heaven awaits us, we know there is something better coming. And trusting God with today is just a foretaste of the faith that will be rewarded when we receive eternal life. Let me pray over you. Lord Jesus, shine the light of your love over your beloved child tonight. Let them bask in the glow of your glory as they sleep peacefully, trusting in your watch care over them. May their dreams be about you and the people who have embodied faith from the Bible. May they wake refreshed, ready to trust you in the big and the small, because you care about them both. We love you and we worship you. It's all because of Jesus. Amen. Feel yourself sinking into your mattress, your head heavy on the pillow, your body loosening with each breath. The tension in your neck slips away, your shoulders ease. Your hands hang loose at your side, open and soft. With your next breath, your back releases further into the cool of your sheets, and you let your mind wander away from the stresses of the day and into a place you know about but have never been a long time ago when there was no sin in the world but only beauty and freedom and closeness with god fear shame regret weren't even words yet as they'd never been experienced Imagine a life so tranquil and untroubled. Let's allow our internal artistry to envision such a place. To feel the serenity, smell the earthiness, and hear only nature. Let me pray for you before we begin. Loving Creator, thank you for this child of yours listening to my voice tonight. Give them sweet, rejuvenating rest. Help them to see you more clearly, to love you more deeply, and to follow you all the days of their life. Thank you for making them the unique and special person that they are. May they always know that you love them. It's in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. Now, Let's begin tonight's story. They call me Adam. Well, he calls me Adam, the God of the universe and my creator. When I woke up that initial day, my first sense was something on my nose. I halfway opened my eyes to see a small winged creature at the tip of it. It instantly flew off. I eased myself up and looked around. Plants of all shapes and colors enveloped me. Trees towered overhead, with streams of sunlight filtering through, illuminating the leaves. A brook bubbled nearby. Insects hummed, and birds called in the distance. A flutter of brilliant colors flew past me. I stood up from the soft sand and looked around at the cacophony of hues and breathed in a thousand smells. The sweetness of purple flowers, the earthiness of a wooded forest, the tanginess of orange fruit dangling from a nearby branch. Adam came a voice. 
It was both startling and familiar at the same time. I knew this being, and I knew he was the one who had made me. I knew he knew me, as though he was inside and outside of me at the same time. His voice was powerful, yet comforting, like I could wrap myself up in it and fall into a deep slumber. He asked me to take a walk with him. I couldn't see him as I could all these other things, but his presence was just as real. He walked down paths through buzzing foliage down to a silted, sandy beach. My feet imprinted into the dampened shoreline and the waves chased after them, covering them with cool water and then racing back into itself. I relished the feeling. The coolness, the freshness, the peace. The smell of salt intermingled with sandalwood and coconut. My creator showed me what I could eat and what I couldn't. I bit into a fleshy fruit and the sweetness and juiciness filled my mouth. A yellow globe lit up the sky, emanating brilliance and reflecting itself on the waters. Luminescent particles frolicked over the surface, mesmerizing me. I splashed my hand in the waves, noticing the strength of my fingers, the muscles of my forearm, the resilient skin covering it all. I picked up a handful of wet sand, squeezing it so it dripped into a tiny pillar. My hands could move in so many ways turning and twisting, gripping and wagging. Another object of colorful feathers brushed past me, tickling my cheek with its wingtip. What is that, God? I felt his smile when he told me that what it was called was up to me. He told me about my job. I would be naming all the animals, whatever I wanted. But there were so many everywhere I looked. I watched the winged creature meet up with its friends, and they easily glided into a V formation disappearing into the sky. Bird, I thought. A majestic, furry animal rubbed against my leg, its kind eyes surrounded by a great mane of long, silky hair. A lion, I determined. Out in the water, Shiny gray sea dwellers spun and played among the waves, splashing cheerfully. Dolphins, I knew. And so it went. Prickly, stodgy creatures became porcupines. A swimming being of fluttering, radiant fins became an angelfish. A chattering, energetic critter swung along branches, deftly traveling from one treetop to the other, was named monkey. I noticed the colorful winged creature that had landed on my nose that morning. A butterfly, I decided. My assigned task gave me a lot of work to do. Thousands of creatures of all different shapes and sizes. Some with long noses or tusks. Some four-legged, two-legged, or one-hundred-legged. Many ran so fast I could never keep up. Some hopped at remarkable speed, and others seemed to mostly sleep, hardly moving at all. But every afternoon, I'd meet with God in the center of the garden. In the cool of the day, we'd walk and talk. He'd tell me who he was and tell me who I was. With every word, a love built inside me, filling me, as though it would explode in the best of ways. For many sunrises and sunsets, I'd walk through canyons, climb mountains, balance along the edge of streams, finding animals and noticing the ones finding me, giving them each a name, telling them who they are, just as the Creator told me who I am. And as I named them, I noticed something. Not a single one was alone. There was always another with it 
One gorilla would pick insects off another's back. One wolf would bring a snack to its partner. One bird would gift a twig to the other. They'd stick close, speaking to each other in the language only they knew. The world was in pairs. On my next walk with the creator, he mentioned this. I just waded into the river and sat on some rocks, while a waterfall poured over my head, splaying my hair against my back and dripping down my legs. Droplets glistened on the boulder I sat on, sparkling like iridescent pebbles. It is not good for man to be alone, he told me. I will make a helper suitable for you. I fell into a deep, dreamless sleep that night, my head resting on the fluffy back of my cheetah friend, my body cushioned in the softest of moss. The sweet song of birds calling to each other woke me the next morning. I turned and saw her. She was watching me. It took my breath away. Another being like me, with supple brown skin, two legs, two arms, standing upright, with ten fingers and ten toes, just as I had. Her long hair fell to her waist like tendrils of a vine, and her eyes, they weren't like any eyes on any of the animals. They smiled even when her face didn't. Their beauty reflected her very soul. I was looking into a reflection of myself, like I'd seen in the still pond, the same but different, softer and brighter and smoother. This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man, I told her. I named her Eve. I reached out my hand to her. Our fingers interlocked perfectly. We fit. We spoke the same language. And now, as the Creator had shown me the garden, I exuberantly presented it all to my partner. I pointed out all the miracles to Eve, towering pink and orange rock pillars, the clouds that drifted overhead, and how they morphed into different shapes. I introduced her to the animals, berries that dripped juice into our hands, briefly staining them purple. And she pointed out things to me, the stunning details I had never noticed. A spider web illuminated in droplets of dew. The way the sun created long shadows as it started its descent. I saw more of how God had made us different. She loved the flowers. She'd collect them. And when I found new and interesting ones, I gathered them for her as well. She often carried bundles of the spiky orange and purple bird of paradise, surrounded by curly, berry-colored celosias and dew-dripping hydrangeas. She'd squeal, seeing the dainty, bell-shaped lily of the valley and the pure white peace lilies. A violet-colored plumeria was always tucked into the waves of her hair. She recognized every bursting bloom by its unique aroma, the earthiness of the sweetbriar and the opulent gardenias that she described as what the morning smells like. And of course, we spent time with the Creator. Now we'd go on our walks together, the three of us. Eve had so many questions, things I'd never thought about. She overflowed with curiosity. Why so many animals? Where did the sun go? How far away were the stars? Did birds fly at night? What did the rhinoceroses use their tusks for? What was in dirt and why did the plants need it? Sometimes he'd patiently answer her. Other times we'd just feel his warm smile over us, as though there were many mysteries that we weren't yet to know. She was enamored with the Creator, amazed by his goodness and wisdom warmed by his love for us. I didn't know the Creator could care about both of us so much. It's as though his affection simply kept growing and expanding. It had been magical exploring the garden on my own, 
but even more so alongside my partner, as though the adventure and excitement and peace were multiplied many times over. Within a cove of trees near the waterfall we'd frolicked in, we rested at the end of the day, in our own human nest of soft grasses and velvety mosses. We called our good nights and gratitudes to the Creator, and I felt my body sinking gently into the earth, my arms around Eve, feeling her warmth, her breath, her being. Tomorrow would be another adventure. Father, fill your child with peace as they lie down tonight. Fill their mind with things of you, the beauty you create, the love you lavish on us, the delight you have in designing our personalities. Give your beloved dreams of hope and light. Allow them to feel your presence as they rest tonight. Remind them that when you created them, you said, this is good and you still believe that. Help your child to wake up renewed and restored, and with a desire to walk with you and know you even deeper. In the precious name of Jesus, we ask these things. Amen. May you now rest as Adam and Eve did in the garden, without a care or concern, with full knowledge that you are deeply loved and enjoyed knowing God created a magnificent playground as the stage of your life, filled with incomprehensible beauty for you to enjoy and grow and thrive. Fill your lungs with the air that he gave you and allow him to lift every weight, every worry from your body and mind and drift off into dreams of that first garden. James chapter 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes scattered among the nations. Greetings. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position. But the rich should take pride in their humiliation, since they will pass away like a wild flower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away even while they go about their business. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows, he chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits of all he created. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen slow to speak and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, 
which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror, and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look at orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. James chapter 2 My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ must not show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in filthy old clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, Here's a good seat for you. But say to the poor man, You stand there or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are blaspheming the noble name of him to whom you belong? If you really keep the royal law found in Scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds, can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God, good. Even the demons believe that, and shudder. You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did? when he offered his son Isaac on the altar. You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do, and not by faith alone. In the same way was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. James chapter 3 Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, 
able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal, or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings, who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. James chapter 4 What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire but do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive, because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think Scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us? But he gives us more grace. That is why Scripture says, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves, then, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or sister, or judges them, speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. But you, who are you to judge your neighbor? Now listen, you will say, Today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why do you not even know what will happen tomorrow? What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, 
if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone, then, knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. James chapter 5 Now listen, you rich people. Weep and wail because of the misery that is coming on you. Your wealth has rotted, and moths have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. Look, the wages you failed to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened yourselves in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the innocent one who was not opposing you. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too, be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no. Otherwise, you will be condemned. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring that person back, remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. Generous God, I offer this prayer in faith. Just like these scriptures instruct, let this prayer over your child be powerful and effective. I ask for wisdom for this child now, that the words in the book of James would bring fresh insight into how to be fully devoted to you. Continue to guide them in their journey through trials and toward being more like your son, Jesus. I ask in faith that they would become truly wise by loving God and others, like you have called them to do. Bless this child as they sleep tonight. James chapter 1 verse 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. We know we lack your wisdom, Lord. So we ask you now for wisdom. You are generous. You do not condemn us, God. But you freely give to us what we ask. Help us to be truly wise. To love fully. We do love you, God. 
help us to love others more as we continue to abide in Christ as you know getting a good night's sleep makes all the difference in your mental physical and emotional health sleep is crucial for processing the day's activities and restoring your tired body if you've tried everything to fall asleep but still struggle there is a quick two-minute technique that might be life-changing for you this technique can help you fall asleep any time of the day or night even in noisy environments so let this bedtime meditation lead you into peaceful slumber all within God's presence take a few moments to declutter your mind by releasing all pressing thoughts to the Lord invite the Holy Spirit to be with you go ahead and whisper your prayer of invitation now make sure there are no distracting lights in the room and get comfortable tonight we will focus on this gentle technique one that's been around for decades to help you regulate your breathing relax every muscle and visualize a peaceful place all within the presence of God now pull the soft covers around you and sink your head into the pillow it's time to hear from the scriptures and learn this two-minute technique to help you fall asleep quickly and gently but first let's pray Lord Jesus you know how I've struggled to fall asleep night after night I toss and turn longing for deep and peaceful rest tonight I come before you in the stillness of this room and ask for your blessing of sleep Lord I surrender all my fears I release all my worries I seek your presence right here right now thank you Lord for leading me to this sleep meditation a bedtime meditation filled with your truth and your comfort I ask that you help me fall asleep quickly and gently in the precious name of Jesus amen now focus your mind on total relaxation feel a sense of calm come over you as you allow every muscle to loosen starting with the muscles in your face relax your forehead and your jaw moving down to your shoulders gently roll them back releasing the strain and tension let your arms rest at your side continue to breathe deeply inhaling slowly and exhaling Feel your chest relax as your breathing becomes steady. Experience a sense of ease and tranquility as relaxation moves throughout your entire body your legs, your calves, your feet. In your mind's eye, picture the most serene place in the world. 
Maybe it's a quiet, sandy beach with warm, gentle waves washing over your feet. Wherever your place of serenity leads you, remain there for several moments. Sense the presence of God with you. As the prophet Isaiah writes, With my soul I have desired you in the night. Yes, by my spirit within me I will seek you. Let your heart's desire be the holy presence of God. By your spirit within you, seek him now. Again, release all tension from your forehead and jaw. Open your mouth slowly. Then close it. Feel all the muscles in your face completely relax. Your shoulders are loose and your arms are resting comfortably at your side. Breathe slowly, steadily. As you inhale and exhale, be comforted as the Lord keeps you in perfect peace because you have fixed your mind on him. Visualize the Lord building a refuge of peace and security around you tonight. Brick by brick, he lays the foundation, a foundation that will never be moved. As Psalm 61, verse 3 through 5 says, For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. For you, God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. For the first time in a long time, you are able to rest deeply, knowing you are sheltered in the refuge of God. Your whole body is relaxed. Your breathing is soft and steady. And your mind is resting on the Lord your strong tower as the Lord surrounds you with his fortress of protection you are completely at ease finally you are able to fall asleep quickly and gently As you enter those first stages of sleep, drifting off peacefully, feeling perfectly content, your mind drifts to images of God's beautiful creation. Green rolling hills, 
a wide open meadow dotted with flowers. A gentle flowing stream of water, clear and refreshing. Soft grass beneath your feet, cushioning your toes. You remain here in the peace of God's creation, inhaling and exhaling. In your dream, you look up to see wispy clouds floating over the quiet meadow. You are lulled by the heavenly scene above you. Your focus is only on the creator of heaven and earth. Nothing troubles you as you allow the billowy clouds to pass by against the pale blue sky. for you the desire of our soul is for your name and for the remembrance of you with my soul I have desired you in the night yes by my spirit within me I will seek you early God loves you dear one As you have waited for him, he waits for you. In this quiet meditation, this holy moment, God is with you. His Holy Spirit helps you relax every muscle, every tendon. He causes you to breathe in a steady rhythm. He allows you to find peace in the presence of His holiness. Heavenly Father, thank you for showing this child how to fall asleep quickly and gently. You are their helper and their comforter. We praise you from the depth of our souls. We dream of pleasant places with you, hand in hand, step by step. With you, we want to remain. Thank you for your presence tonight. Father, let your angels surround this beloved child. Surround their home and guard that which they've committed to you. Be with them through every breath every minute and every hour of the night in Jesus name amen sleep deeply in Christ Jesus your fortress your shield and your strong tower
Tonight you will be lulled to sleep while experiencing the glory of God in the heavens and knowing that the words of God are just, all his ways are pure, all his judgments are righteous. His words are to be desired more than gold, and they are sweeter than honey. Everyone has seen the sky. It spreads over our heads in both daytime and nighttime. You don't hear it speak. It doesn't have words. Yet the glory of God is proclaimed in its very existence. The Word of God, on the other hand, often speaks loudly and clearly in our hearts and minds. We hear it preached, we listen to it read, and Psalm 19 reminds us that every word of it is true and can be trusted. As you ready yourself for sleep tonight, settle into your bed in your most comfortable position. Let your muscles relax as you begin taking deep, steadying breaths. Pay attention to the sensations in your body and release the tension you feel in your feet, in your legs, in your back, in your shoulders, in your neck. As you continue to breathe deeply and slowly, repeat these words silently. May my spoken words and unspoken thoughts be pleasing even to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Let all the cares of the day melt away as you rest. Release the pressure as you trust the Lord with what concerns you. Keep your breathing slow and steady. Let me pray for you. God, you are our rock and our redeemer, our firm foundation. Thank you for being with this child of yours as they sleep tonight. Thank you for reminding them that you are mighty yet gentle, everywhere at once, yet close by their side. May the picture of this psalm comfort them and relax them tonight so that they might enjoy a peaceful and restful sleep. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Imagine that it is dawn and you are up early, enjoying a freshly brewed cup of coffee. It's deep roasted scent filling your nose, the steam warming your face. You sit at your kitchen table and gaze out the window at the pinkening sky. All is still in your home and your heart is at peace. A few wispy clouds stroll by, carrying the colors of the rising sun like cotton candy held by a child. Early birds flit across the expanse, searching for a small pool of water in which to take their morning bath. There are still a few stars visible in the brightening sky, and a thin crescent moon still glows dimly. But the wakening sun will soon overcome its light. As you ready yourself for your day, You take for granted that the sun will make its way across the sky. It's not something you have to think about. Every day it makes its course across the expanse. By the time the rest of your household has risen, the colors of the sunrise have faded, and the golden glow warming the morning air has ascended beyond the tops of the trees whose strong branches stretch like arms toward the warmth. The rest of your morning is spent indoors, 
working at your job, or going to school, or taking care of your family, being in the place God has given you. You glance occasionally out the window, seeing the changing shadows, the gathering and disturbing of the clouds. Perhaps your cat has followed a sunbeam in your house from window to window, and you envy its carefree life. Or you see kids playing in the park across from your office, running and chasing a ball in the bright green grass, their caregiver watching and calling encouragement of their play. When midday rolls up to your door, You step outside to greet it, again taking for granted that you will see the sun at its peak in the bright blue sky. You sit for a few moments in the bright sunshine, closing your eyes and turning your face to feel the full warmth. A gentle breeze with a hint of the coolness to come ruffles your hair. A quick shadow darts past as a small cloud momentarily scuttles by. You linger for a time, but duty calls and you head back inside, still feeling the sun's warmth like a hug as you go. High noon races toward dusk as your day dwindles, and your journey home begins with the sun descending toward the western horizon. The wispy clouds have returned. And now they carry the orange, magenta, and purple strains of the setting sun. The sight is magnificent. You never tire of seeing its beauty, the rays spreading out the splendor across the sky. Soon stars begin to pop out of the deepening blue. Constellations become barely discernible. Planets glow brightly. The air cools as the sun disappears below the horizon, sinking quickly, hiding its face until it starts its journey again in the morning. Throughout the day, you have been told the story of God's majesty simply by watching the sky. The heavens are telling the glory of God. They are a marvelous display of His craftsmanship. Day and night, they keep on telling about God. Without a sound or a word, silent in the skies, their message reaches out to all the world. The sun lives in the heavens where God placed it and moves out across the skies as radiant as a bridegroom going to his wedding or as joyous as an athlete looking forward to a race. The sun crosses the heavens from end to end, and nothing can hide from its heat. Inside your house, where it's warm and comfortable, you sit in a rose-colored armchair, take off your shoes, and settle in to spend some time alone. On the sturdy brown table beside you sits your Bible, its soft leather cover worn by years of use. Next to it is a pile of work you brought home that you could get some extra money for if you completed it tonight. The thought is tempting. And then you think about that carton of ice cream just sitting there in your freezer. Its sweetness entices you. The thought of that icy goodness causes your taste buds to burst in anticipation. And then you glance again at your Bible. You remember how the words it contains have fed your soul time and time again. Verses burst into your mind like the taste buds had in your mouth. Psalm chapter 27 verse 13. I believe that I shall look upon the Lord in the land of the living. 
Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have for he has said I will never leave you nor forsake you John chapter 10 verse 10 the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy I came that they may have life and have it abundantly Psalm chapter 48 verse 1 great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God his holy mountain beautiful in elevation is the joy of all the earth Mount Zion and the far north the city of the great King your heart quickens as the Spirit of God brings these words to your mind Psalm chapter 42 verse 1 as a deer pants for flowing streams so pants my soul for you O God Romans chapter 8 verse 38 and 39 for I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord Romans chapter 5 verse 8 God demonstrates his own love for us in this while we still were sinners Christ died for us on and on the life-giving words of God fill you up you forget about the extra work beside you you forget about the ice cream in the freezer in your hand is all you need his promises are true his words are life-giving God's laws are perfect they protect us make us wise and give us joy and light God's laws are pure eternal just they are more desirable than gold they are sweeter than honey dripping from a honeycomb for they warn us away from harm and give success to those who obey them your eyes close with contentment your worries are in God's hands your heart is at peace as you end your day with the Lord you open your heart to his gaze you want every part of you to be seen cleansed and available to him you want every thought and every action to be pleasing to him but how can I ever know what sins are lurking in my heart cleanse me from these hidden faults and keep me from deliberate wrongs help me to stop doing them only then can I be free of guilt and innocent of some great crime may my spoken words and unspoken thoughts be pleasing even to you O Lord my rock and my Redeemer Heavenly Father I pray for this child of yours tonight as they sleep may your watchful eye be ever upon them in love and grace tomorrow may they experience the awesomeness of your glory whenever they look at the sky if they wake before the dawn let them see your glory in the sunrise as they go about their day may they see your wonders in the sun and the clouds in the evening may the sunset remind them of your love and great compassion and may the stars speak silently to them of your majesty and your intimacy for you know them each by name 
as they sleep give them peaceful satisfying dreams and when they are awake may your holy trustworthy words be ever in their thoughts i pray this in the name of jesus amen now imagine yourself sitting on a very busy downtown street you're blind so you can't see what's going on around you but the crowd is overwhelming your voice cannot be heard there are so many people walking on the sidewalk that you're constantly being bumped into the sounds the smells the dust the clamor every day it's the same you keep asking and begging for someone anyone to give you just a little bit of money so you can eat you hear no friendly words you feel no friendly touch in fact you can hear some talking about you unkindly maybe thinking because that you can't see you can't hear all of a sudden you hear someone shout there he is everybody immediately starts to surge toward this individual you have no idea who they are all wanting to see you try and ask people who is there but no one answers you then you hear someone say there's Jesus you've heard of this man his amazing teaching his miracles oh his miracles the thought flits through your mind that maybe Jesus could help you oh, he's helped so many others but then reality sets in and the hope drains from you you've been tossed aside so many times why would Jesus even pay any attention to you you just sit there try to listen to what's going on just then you hear someone call out to you did you hear that right did someone say your name and then and then you hear it again softer closer gentler not since your father spoke to you as a child have you heard your name said in that way so so lovingly all other noise has stopped it's as if you're in a cave no one around you moves or speaks it's Jesus you don't know how you know but you know it's Jesus and he has found you you feel his hand on your forehead you you hear his gentle voice and all of a sudden the darkness that has always enveloped you starts to grow thinner light begins to break through and your eyes begin to focus and you find yourself looking directly into Jesus's eyes and Jesus is looking directly at you and you feel more love coming from him than you have ever felt in your entire life imagine 
imagine being blind your whole life and then miraculously being healed imagine being overlooked ridiculed and then suddenly loved beyond your wildest imagination out of all the others on the street that day that he could have stopped for Jesus chose you maybe you felt the way that the blind man felt that people ignore you and you feel that you're not worthy of love maybe you've been suffering with an ailment and you feel that God has forgotten you but the truth is this you are worth everything in the eyes of Jesus and he wants what is best for you listen to John 3 1 from the Amplified Bible see what an incredible quality of love the Father has shown to us that we would be permitted to be named and called and counted the children of God and so we are for this reason the world does not know us because it did not know him God calls us his children so that we can get a glimpse an idea of what our relationship with him should be truth is there's no way we can totally grasp just how much he loves each of us it's too vast and wide it's immeasurable unchanging never-ending did you hear that never ending he will always love you we are all so precious to him Webster's dictionary defines the word precious as something of great value not to be wasted or treated carelessly that's how God views you you have value you are not to be wasted or treated carelessly maybe you feel like you've done so many wrong things in your life that God doesn't love you that couldn't be more wrong God loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die for you perhaps you've seen the verse John 3 16 on a sign in the end zone of a football game along the side of the road on a billboard but let's take a closer look at that verse in the New Living Translation for this is how God loved the world he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life God did that for everyone meaning no matter what you've done in your life God still loves you so much that he sent his son to die for you you're precious to him Jesus loved telling stories in Luke 15 11 through 32 in the New Living Translation he tells the story of the prodigal son to demonstrate God's love for us 
even when you mess up and sin and don't feel worthy of God's love this story explains how God views you listen to this parable a man had two sons the younger son told his father I want my share of your estate now before you die so his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons a few days later this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land and there he wasted all his money and wild living about the time his money ran out a great famine swept over the land and he began to starve he persuaded a local farmer to hire him and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs the young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him but no one gave him anything when he finally came to his senses he said to himself at home even the hired servants have food enough to spare and here I am dying of hunger I will go home to my father and say father I have sinned against both heaven and you and I'm no longer worthy of being called your son please take me on as a hired servant so he returned home to his father and while he was still a long way off his father saw him coming filled with love and compassion he ran to his son embraced him and kissed him his son said to him father I have sinned against both heaven and you and I am no longer worthy of being called your son but his father said to his servants quick bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet and kill the calf we have been fattening we must celebrate with a feast for this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life he was lost but now he is found so the party began meanwhile the older son was in the fields working when he returned home he heard music and dancing in the house and he asked one of the servants what was going on your brother is back he was told and your father has killed the fattened calf we are celebrating because of his safe return the older brother was angry and wouldn't go in his father came out and begged him but he replied all these years I've slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to do and in all that time you never gave me even one young goat for a feast with my friends yet when this son of yours comes back after squandering your money on prostitutes you celebrate by killing the fattened calf his father said to him look dear son you've always stayed with me and everything I have is yours we had to celebrate this happy day for your brother was dead and has come back to life he was lost but now he is found God is telling you right now that he loves you 
you are so precious to him no matter how much you've sinned God is still waiting for you to come back to him now sleep in confidence knowing that you are loved and are precious to God let's pray oh dear father thank you for loving us thank you for your grace and mercy I ask now that you would come and comfort your child as they sleep tonight may the Lord bless them and protect them may the Lord smile on them and be gracious to them may the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace amen now rest in his loving arms gracious Heavenly Father thank you for this beloved child of yours thank you for another day of life one that was full of possibilities and opportunities to see your hand at work in their life I pray that as they sleep you will remind them of your presence and nearness let this night of rest be refreshing and restorative for them help to rest in the promise of your word that comes from Psalm 90 before the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth in the world from everlasting to everlasting you are God yes God from everlasting to everlasting you reign you reign over every aspect of our lives from the mountain highs to the valley lows and we give you thanks I pray that this sleep story would stir a great affection for you and a reminder that throughout all of time you are at work to redeem and restore bringing purpose and value to every aspect of our lives may this stir within your child a desire to give you glory and praise I give you thanks Heavenly Father for your goodness and graciousness in Jesus name I pray amen before you can explore the wonders of Machu Picchu you must first take the journey to get there it starts in the ancient town of Cusco Peru imagine that you spent the night in a bed and breakfast an inn or sorts you wake up early in the morning on a beautiful spring day you make your way out of the guest room and step outside onto the narrow cobblestone street with inns lining the entire way after bidding your gracious host adieu you start the journey toward the train station as you walk toward Plaza de Armas Cusco city center you're captured by the bright blue sky with beautiful plush clouds scattered all throughout the first thing you see in the distance as you approach the main square is a stunning cathedral the rusty orange of the old basilica is striking against the blue sky and stands out clearly as it's nearly three times bigger than any of the other buildings in the square the cathedral has three dark green doors one is in the very center more than twice as tall and twice as wide as the other two which sit on either side of the main entrance 
Atop the cathedral, you see two bell towers, one positioned in each corner. You see two bells and wonder if there might be more. You check your watch in hopes that you're nearing the top of the hour so you'll hear the bells ring before you leave. You spend a few more moments walking around the square. You pause at the ornate fountain right in the center and feel a mist of the falling water on your face and arms. It's refreshing in the warm spring sun. You dig into your pocket, remembering the Peruvian soul you have from the day before, and fish out 25 centavos to toss into the fountain. It's nearing 9 o'clock in the morning, and you know it's time to make your way to the train station. As you walk to the train, you smile at the beauty of the Peruvian people. You see an older woman sitting on a bench in the square, weaving what looks to be a blanket. She's wearing a colorful shirt and has a straw hat shielding her face from the bright sun. Her hair is dark and long, styled in two long braids that hang over each shoulder. You make eye contact with her, and she smiles her kindness evident as she nods to the traveler, wandering through her beloved city center. As you walk up the steps to the train station, you hear the bells in Plaza de Armas chime nine times to indicate the changing of the hour. You have just a few minutes until your train departs, so you grab a cold drink, find your ticket, and make your way onto the train. You find your seat next to the window and settle in for the three and a half hour ride from the colorful city of Cusco to the town at the base of Machu Picchu, the town of Aguas Calientes. The train begins to move, and before you know it, you are miles outside of Cusco, riding through the majestic Andes Mountains. The route takes you through both canyons and open fields. There are moments when you can't even see the sky for the height of the mountain range, and moments where you're right along the Urubamba River, seeing the water rush over rocks as it flows down the middle of the mountain range. You pause. Take a moment to stand in awe of the beauty of these mountains, this river, the spring sky, an experience of seeing the world. You remember the words of Psalm 90 verse 2, before the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Before you know it, the train is arriving at the station in Aguas Calientes. You exit with the other passengers to find that just beyond the train platform is a market. There are dozens and dozens of smaller booths and tables filled with everything a traveler could desire. There is clothing woven with beautiful colors, just as you saw the woman in Plaza de Armas wearing. Bright yellows, oranges, reds, and purples woven together into bright dresses, scarves, poncho-like pants, and more. There are backpacks and fanny packs, even large tote-like bags that could be slung over one shoulder. 
you walk to the next booth where you find a stunning collection of handmade artisan jewelry. There are bracelets with matching necklaces, a few trays of rings, and then what appears to be the main focus of the creator. The earrings. There must be hundreds of pairs hung neatly on carefully crafted stands. You finger a pair, admiring the emerald stone in the center, glittering in the sun that shines brightly overhead. Next, you notice a pair made out of small coins, and you recognize them as the same Peruvian soul that you've had clinking around in your pocket. You smile again at the creativity and continue your perusing. You continue walking down the narrow walkway between the two rows of booths. The concrete floor is dusty beneath your feet and the spring air is cool on your skin. At another booth, you see several tables covered in neatly folded blankets. You instinctively reach out your hand, wondering if the blankets are as soft as they look. You rub your hand along the stack and are surprised by just how soft the blanket actually is. The kind shop owner smiles sweetly and in simple English tells you it's the alpaca wool that makes it so soft. You look closely at the creative patterns on each of the blankets and resolve that you'll stop by this booth again before your trip ends for a souvenir alpaca blanket. This blanket would be so nice to sleep under. You wander a little longer in the market before exiting and walking onto the streets of Aguas Calientes. The air is still cool, despite the sun shining, and you revel in the beauty of changing seasons. You are reminded that winter is over, and it won't be back for many, many months. It is no longer a season to bundle up and endure the cold, but rather a season of new life. A season to be refreshed and renewed. A season to remember that God is good, and it is He alone who sustains you through winter and brings you into spring. Remember the goodness of the God who both makes the mountains and forms the earth, including its seasons and all its wonders. As it says in Psalm 90, verse 2, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. As you walk the streets of Aguas Calientes, your eyes easily wander to the brightly colored buildings that line the city streets. Side by side, you see bright yellow, bright red, bright orange, and bright blue. The colors continue, alternating mostly between yellows and oranges with a few reds and blues sprinkled throughout. The bright paint gives the town a playful, inviting feel. You can't help but smile when you see them. And you notice that most of the people you pass on the street are smiling too. Although you've made it to Aguas Calientes, you know the journey is nowhere close to over. The real prize of this adventure will be in walking the grounds of Machu Picchu. But first, 
you have to get there the bus that will take you further up the mountain to the site of the ancient civilization will be leaving shortly so you take a moment to grab a bite to eat stopping in a little cafe for a pastry and a warm drink the adventure is just beginning the time has finally come for you to take the last leg of the journey to Machu Picchu after various planes and trains the last leg will be taken by bus you easily find your way to the bus pickup location it is easy to notice because there is already a long line of people waiting for the bus to pull up and begin loading as you walk past dozens of people to reach the end of the line you hear a variety of different languages being spoken and again you give thanks to God for his creation after waiting just a few minutes the charter sized bus pulls up to the stop and passengers begin boarding you make your way up the three steps and onto the bus where you choose a seat near the front the bus fills up and the final leg of your journey to Machu Picchu begins the bus ride is about 30 minutes long taking you nine kilometers up the switchback mountain you marvel at the wonder of a road carved into the side of the mountain and remember again the God who created them before the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth in the world from everlasting to everlasting you are God Oh father maker of the mountains you are so good we worship you for your majesty for your creativity and for the intricate way you design the world thank you for this gift of creation and thank you for the ways we get to enjoy it the bus arrives and you make your way away from the crowd where you see your guide waiting to lead you up the steps and through the entrance gate as you come around the corner from the entrance gate you catch your first glimpse of Machu Picchu and it stops you in your tracks it is more incredible and majestic than any picture you could have attempted to convey you stand amazed at what the ancient Incan people built hundreds of years before modern technology the site is massive instead of following the crowd down into the actual site you take the path in the other direction going up to an ancient guard gate you follow the well-worn path and find that this indeed is the most extravagant view of Machu Picchu it is just like the picturesque photos you have seen in magazines and postcards you learn that the mountain that looms over the site is called Wayne you Pichu its presence brings majesty and prestige to the world you are currently admiring from this view you can see all of the nearly 200 remaining structures on the historical site you can see the way the ancient walls slope down the steep mountain creating a miniature city built for a king having admired the city from above 
you make your way down to walk the grassy paths that are lined between the granite stone intricately laid so long ago your guide leads you explaining in detail the mastery of how the Incas built this hidden world you marvel at the way the walls were built without any kind of mortar the builders precisely cutting out each and every stone to ensure a perfect fit as you consider the intricate way this civilization was designed you think of the intricate ways in which you were designed by God feel the peace that comes from knowing just how deeply the God of the universe cares for you you continue the adventure wandering through Machu Picchu learning its history giggling over the roaming llamas and alpacas and learning more about who God is and how he cares for you gracious Heavenly Father thank you for the promises found in Psalm 90 verse 2 before the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth in the world from everlasting to everlasting you are God as much as we treasure seeing the glorious things your people have made on this earth ever more do we treasure you the God who made it all I pray again for your beloved child as they sleep tonight may they tangibly sense your presence may they trust confidently in the plan you have for their life may they believe that you are good that your heart towards them is gentle and kind in the name of Jesus I pray amen tonight our scripture focus will be on the glorious words of praise from Psalm chapter 8 this Psalm of David might best be described as a song of God's glory displayed throughout the heavens about this chapter Charles Spurgeon once said let us go abroad and sing it beneath the starry heavens at eventide rest in that poetic phrase for a moment beneath the starry heavens at eventide inhale and exhale relax every muscle feel the tension just leave your body as you turn your thoughts to the glory of the Lord tonight in a moment you will hear the words of David as he offered a beautiful tribute to the God of all creation and to the glory of the Lord seated high above the heavens but before we visit this psalm of praise please join me as I pray Holy Father your glory rises far above the heavens so vast so boundless we just can't comprehend it yet by the works of your hands you give us glimpses into your magnificent glory and for that we're so thankful tonight Lord open our ears to hear the wonderful words of praise from the mouth of David join our hearts with yours as we meditate upon your glory for our own good 
help us to release all distracting thoughts and just focus only on you and your perfect word settle us Lord in the goodness of your presence and I pray these things in the beautiful name of Jesus amen and now here are the words of David O Lord our Lord how excellent is your name in all the earth who have set your glory above the heavens out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants you have ordained strength because of our enemies that you may silence the enemy and the Avenger when I look at your heavens the work of your fingers the moon and the stars which you have set in place what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him what is man that you are mindful of him how is it possible that the creator of the universe has time to be mindful of us surely he he has better things to think about and yet God's thoughts over us are thoughts of love and acceptance after all not only did his hands set the moon and stars in place but his hands fashioned each of us in his own likeness dear one the Lord is mindful of you tonight think about that he knows you he thinks about you he loves you let those thoughts bring you comfort and peace what is the son of man that you care for him oh how God cares for you he cares about the smallest details regarding your life feel that feel his nurturing presence watching over you as you fall asleep you are his beloved child and you are held in his loving hands there's no doubt that he is with you for the scriptures declare that he is Emmanuel God with us feel the presence of God Emmanuel with you tonight the Lord has set his glory above the heavens he has set the moon and stars in place for centuries man has tried to figure it all out they have endlessly searched for answers about the universe the heavens have been a puzzled wonder to mankind but know this God has it all figured out nothing is a puzzle to him he has put all the right pieces together in just the right way beyond our scope of understanding he designed the universe the heavens the earth and our lives for his glory and our good one 19th century astronomer once wrote what have we to tell of all the different varieties of stars what of those most supremely glorious objects what of the Milky Way such are a few of the questions which occur 
when we ponder on the mysteries of the heavens the mysteries of the heavens are no mystery to their creator for he has set his glory above the heavens rest under the heavens that God has put into place as a vast covering of starlit wonder and glory Lord God please bless this beloved one who is resting in the glory of your presence tonight bless them with peace hope and trust in you settle their breathing into a soft rhythm helping them sink into a deep peaceful sleep Lord as they rest quietly I ask that you allow them to dream of the beautiful works of your hands the works of your fingers that set the moon and stars in place the works of your magnificent glory found high above the heavens in the name of Jesus I pray amen on each of the historical flights of the space shuttle discovery the crew was awakened each morning by song these wake-up calls were a tradition of the NASA program and the songs were selected by mission control one Sunday morning during orbit John Glenn and the rest of the crew woke up to a song called hallelujahs a song that speaks of cratered moon in sparrows wings oh thunders booms and Saturn's rings unveil our father as you sing and my soul wells up with hallelujahs the writer of the song Chris Rice was overwhelmed by the thought of his humble song being played for the astronauts in space as they hovered far above the earth with a miraculous view of God's handiwork they were filled with a song of worship to the maker of the universe and my soul wells up with hallelujahs holy God maker of all that is seen and unseen our souls well up with hallelujahs praise and honor of who you are thank you Lord for creating the heavens in such a vast array underneath the starry sky we rest in the holiness of your presence we dream of the works of your hands in all your glory and goodness amen when I look at your heavens the work of your fingers the moon and the stars which you have set in place what is man that you are mindful of him in the son of man that you care for him yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor you have given him dominion over the works of your hands you have put all things under his feet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor rest humbly in the place that God has established for you 
a little lower than the angels and crowned with glory and honor I praise you for setting everything in its place just so perfectly underneath the blanket of the starry heavens you have assigned us our proper place tonight Lord I pray over this dear child for rest and peace in your presence I ask that your glory will continue to shine in their life for their ultimate good as the earth continues to spin on its axis and make its orbit around the Sun I pray that the life of this listener right here will continue to flow under the mighty direction of your hand thank you Lord that you are mindful of us that you care about us and that you love us in the holy name of Jesus amen Oh Lord our Lord how majestic is your name in all the earth you have set your glory above the heavens out of the mouths of babies and infants you have established strength how majestic is your name your glory above the heavens you have established strength feel God's majesty and glory and strength covering you tonight out of the mouths of babies and infants you have established strength sweet praise from the mouths of babes worshiping the one who saves from sky above to earth below the works of your hands we long to know heavens declare the strength of your glory we long to hear of heaven's story from first breath of all creation through each blessed generation how can your glory be understood your perfect glory for our good Heavenly Father Father of glory and goodness remain over this beloved child tonight as they sleep in peace help them to get enough rest to feel renewed at morning light and to awaken with a sense of refreshment thank you Lord for being that constant in their life that constant source of hope and faith I pray for the blessing of your presence to stay with them through the night and continue as they face a new day I pray all these things in the precious name of your son Jesus amen rest in the peace of his presence now take another deep breath in and release it Heavenly Father please surround this listener with your peace let the joy of your presence flow over them and through them as they fall asleep I pray that you will clear their mind of everything that troubles them take it away Lord remove the worry and stress 
focus their thoughts on the true home where they will spend eternity with you father thank you for your word that reminds us we are not of this world we need that reminder more than ever before fill us with the assurance that this is not all there is your kingdom will come and your will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven please fill the heart of this precious child with your peace the peace that surpasses all understanding I ask that you guard this person's life and the lives of their loved ones that they will rest assured that you are God you are holy you are just and you are good now father please be with us as we read the words of your son tonight give us open hearts to receive your truth for it is in the name of Jesus I pray amen in John chapter 17 verses 11 through 16 Jesus prayed to his father in heaven by saying I will remain in the world no longer but they are still in the world and I am coming to you Holy Father protect them by the power of your name the name you gave me so that they may be one as we are one while I was with them I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me I am coming to you now but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them I have given them your word and the world has hated them for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world my prayer is not that you take them out of the world but that you protect them from the evil one they are not of the world even as I am not of it hear the words of Jesus again they are not of the world even as I am not of it rest on the truth of his words for several moments what a comfort to know that Jesus prays to the Father on your behalf Jesus loves you so much he prays for you Romans 8 34 says that Jesus was raised to life and sits at the right hand of the Father interceding for us Jesus intercedes for us he is our mediator just as he said in John 17 Holy Father protect them by the power of your name the name you gave me Jesus intercedes for us even right now let that comforting thought settle your heart and mind tonight you my friend are not of this world you have a Savior who is fully aware of what is happening around you and he is your constant source of peace 
feel his peace surrounding you shielding you from the chaos in the world nothing can steal the peace you have in Jesus in him you remain steadfast strengthened and secure in his promises trust him lean into him let all remaining traces of unrest fall away as you depend fully on him hear the sound of your own breath rising and falling steadily in the night feel the soft beating of your heart Jesus is sustaining you through it all Holy Father thank you thank you for your sustaining power to overcome the world there is nothing that can take this beloved child out of your hands you are a shield about them a mighty fortress of peace and safety thank you father for your protection in a lost and dying world we have life in you we praise you we thank you we give you all the glory in Jesus name in John 14 Jesus says my father's house has many rooms if that were not so would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you I am going there to prepare a place for you as you drift off to sleep allow your mind to imagine the place Jesus is preparing for you for all eternity you will be surrounded by holiness goodness and righteousness no more sickness no more pain no more darkness everything will be made new there will be no need for the Sun or moon for the glory of God gives it light and the lamb is its lamp the nations will walk by its light and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it in the glory of God and in the light of the lamb we will live forever and ever you are not of this world all of this is temporary a vapor that will soon pass away there is no need to worry or fear the Lord is your God and he is with you he cares for you there is nothing beyond his grasp hear the words of Jesus again as he prayed I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them full measure of his joy it is the Lord's desire that you have the full measure of his joy within you even here even now especially now you can have the fullness of God's joy within you sleep peacefully in the full measure of his joy indescribable undeniable everlasting joy gracious God 
in the fullness of your peace and joy please lead this beloved person into glorious dreams of heaven give them a glimpse even the tiniest glimpse of the place you are preparing for them remind them Lord that they are not of this world all of this will be made new even though the heavens and earth will pass away your love and your presence is here to stay cover this child with your presence please Lord fill them with your indescribable grace and full measure of joy in the precious name of your son Jesus amen sleep now beloved your assurance has come with Jesus and the Father you are made one not of this world this passing place for in the blink of an eye you'll be face to face for now protected by the power of his name sleep now beloved in his joy remain rest in the peace of his presence now take another deep breath in and release it Heavenly Father please surround this listener with your peace let the joy of your presence flow over them and through them as they fall asleep I pray that you will clear their mind of everything that troubles them take it away Lord remove the worry and stress focus their thoughts on the true home where they will spend eternity with you father thank you for your word that reminds us we are not of this world we need that reminder more than ever before fill us with the assurance that this is not all there is your kingdom will come and your will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven please fill the heart of this precious child with your peace the peace that surpasses all understanding I ask that you guard this person's life and the lives of their loved ones that they will rest assured that you are God you are holy you are just and you are good now father please be with us as we read the words of your son tonight give us open hearts to receive your truth for it is in the name of Jesus I pray amen in John chapter 17 verses 11 through 16 Jesus prayed to his father in heaven by saying I will remain in the world no longer but they are still in the world and I am coming to you Holy Father protect them by the power of your name the name you gave me so that they may be one as we are one while I was with them I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me I am coming to you now 
but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them I have given them your word and the world has hated them for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world my prayer is not that you take them out of the world but that you protect them from the evil one they are not of the world even as I am not of it hear the words of Jesus again they are not of the world even as I am not of it rest on the truth of his words for several moments what a comfort to know that Jesus prays to the Father on your behalf Jesus loves you so much he prays for you Romans 8 34 says that Jesus was raised to life and sits at the right hand of the Father interceding for us Jesus intercedes for us he is our mediator just as he said in John 17 Holy Father protect them by the power of your name the name you gave me Jesus intercedes for us even right now let that comforting thought settle your heart and mind tonight you my friend are not of this world you have a Savior who is fully aware of what is happening around you and he is your constant source of peace feel his peace surrounding you shielding you from the chaos in the world nothing can steal the peace you have in Jesus in him you remain steadfast strengthened and secure in his promises trust him lean into him let all remaining traces of unrest fall away as you depend fully on him hear the sound of your own breath rising and falling steadily in the night feel the soft beating of your heart Jesus is sustaining you through it all Holy Father thank you thank you for your sustaining power to overcome the world there is nothing that can take this beloved child out of your hands you are a shield about them a mighty fortress of peace and safety thank you father for your protection in a lost and dying world we have life in you we praise you we thank you we give you all the glory in Jesus name in John 14 Jesus says my father's house has many rooms if that were not so would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you I am going there to prepare a place for you as you drift off to sleep allow your mind to imagine the place Jesus is preparing for you 
for all eternity you will be surrounded by holiness goodness and righteousness no more sickness no more pain no more darkness everything will be made new there will be no need for the Sun or moon for the glory of God gives it light and the lamb is its lamp the nations will walk by its light and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it in the glory of God and in the light of the lamb we will live forever and ever you are not of this world all of this is temporary a vapor that will soon pass away there is no need to worry or fear the Lord is your God and he is with you he cares for you there is nothing beyond his grasp hear the words of Jesus again as he prayed I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them full measure of his joy it is the Lord's desire that you have the full measure of his joy within you even here even now especially now you can have the fullness of God's joy within you sleep peacefully in the full measure of his joy indescribable undeniable everlasting joy gracious God in the fullness of your peace and joy please lead this beloved person into glorious dreams of heaven give them a glimpse even the tiniest glimpse of the place you are preparing for them remind them Lord that they are not of this world all of this will be made new even though the heavens and earth will pass away your love and your presence is here to stay cover this child with your presence please Lord fill them with your indescribable grace and full measure of joy in the precious name of your son Jesus amen sleep now beloved your assurance has come with Jesus and the Father you are made one not of this world this passing place for in the blink of an eye you'll be face to face for now protected by the power of his name sleep now beloved in his joy remain relax in the peace of God as I say a prayer over you tonight Heavenly Father please cover your beloved one as they find true rest in you please help them know that you are with them please cover them with your love and your goodness as a soft blanket envelop them in the comfort of your peace in the name of Jesus I pray amen now 
as I share the beautiful reminders from Scripture the reminders of God's goodness sink your head deeper into your pillow and completely relax every muscle in your body inhale and exhale It was the Apostle Paul in the book of Acts who reminded the people of Lystra that God's goodness could always be counted on. He encouraged them to turn away from worthless things, things that could not be counted on, and turn to the living God. Now, Lystra was an ancient village built upon a modest hill rising from the surrounding plains of Asia Minor. With the grandeur of mountains to the west and to the south, this Roman colony was mentioned as the hometown of Timothy, one of the young men Paul mentored in his faith. Paul visited Lystra on more than one occasion preaching the gospel and healing a man who had been lame from birth. On one of his visits, Paul encouraged the believers of Lystra that even though the Lord had allowed the nations to walk in their own ways, he never left them without evidence of himself and his goodness. God never left them. Even through trial and hardship, the evidence of His goodness was all around them. What an encouragement! The evidence of God's goodness surrounds us as well. It is seen in the illustrations of nature, as each new day is yet another portrait of God's exquisite artistry. From blue ocean tides and sandy beaches to flowering meadows and lush green forests, God's goodness is evident to all. Be assured of God's goodness, of His presence in your life, No matter what is going on in the world, the Lord is with you every step of the way. Allow that thought to surround you with peace tonight. Breathe softly in and out. As Paul continued to encourage the believers in Lystra with the beautiful testimony of the Lord, he pointed out that it is God who sends the rain provides good crops and gives joyful hearts to his beloved. God sends the rain. Hear it. Falling gently from the clouds to water the earth. Like small pebbles hitting the ground in a cadence of rhythmic wonder. Sometimes the raindrops fall so softly they can barely be heard. 
Other times, sheets of rain come in waves and torrents, cascading down like a waterfall from heaven. Yet, each drop fulfills its purpose, offering much needed moisture to the dry and thirsty ground. The earth drinks in the rain and silently begs for more. Let the showers of God's goodness fall gently on your soul tonight. Drink in the sweetness of His presence. Inhale and exhale. Not only does the Lord water the ground, He cultivates the earth, causing good crops to burst forth and grow as sustenance for His people. In various places, fields of grain spread out like quilts across the landscape. Some of the fields are circular, some are square, and some are shaped like pieces of a puzzle. Each crop provides what is needed for that region. As you gaze upon the fields from above, you see that some are deep green like emeralds dotting the landscape. These include clover, parsley, and fennel. Other crops appear like vast treasures of pure gold. They sway in the wind, waving their greeting to the passerby. Wheat, corn, oats, and rye. Fields of grain. Sustenance. Good. And perfect gifts from our Father in heaven. bask in the abundant blessings of the Lord tonight. Continue to breathe gently in and out in steady rhythm, allowing your body to fully relax. Inhale and exhale as I pray over you. Good and gracious Lord, thank you for your presence tonight. You are good. You are holy. I thank you for this listener who has invited your spirit to cover them as they sleep. Please help them rest deeply in your goodness, knowing that you are with them Bless them, Lord, with peace. In the precious name of your Son, I pray. Sense the soothing, calming presence of the Lord tonight. Breathe in His goodness. Breathe out all your cares. He is with you. Paul finished his message to the people in Lystra by reminding them that God is the giver of joyful hearts. Allow the Holy Spirit to fill your heart with joy tonight. It is His good and perfect gift to you. He has joy in abundance. 
it is a fruit that never fails to be produced in the heart that fully trusts in him oh taste and see that the Lord is good blessed is the man who trusts in him taste and see the Lord is good trust in him and be blessed you can trust in the goodness of God breathe softly in and out allow the comfort of the Holy Spirit to wash over you he gives you the deepest sense of peace not as the world gives but deeper peace than anything you've ever known in the book of Exodus we read that the Lord God is merciful and gracious long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth let those truths seek deep into your heart he is merciful he is gracious he is patient he is full of truth and he is so so good rest in these beautiful descriptions of God tonight as you gaze into the heavens on a starry night there is no doubt that the glory of the Lord fills every bit of space unwavering unchanging for every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows every good and perfect gift comes from the father let that promise reassure your heart tonight the father of the heavenly lights does not change like shifting shadows as the hymnist said there is no shadow of turning with thee hear the soft melody of those words there is no shadow of turning with thee remain in the comfort of God's unfailing love stay in the presence of his spirit rest in the silence for several moments God does not change he remains steadfast and true to his word you can rely on him you can trust in his goodness for every good and perfect gift comes from the father slow your breathing in and out softly gently deeply
God is so good to us I am reminded of the simple chorus God is so good God is so good God is so good he's so good to me the evidence of his goodness is all around you it envelops you like a soft cloud of comfort sink deeper under the covers relax every muscle in your body inhale and exhale as I pray over you most merciful God full of grace I pray over your beloved child tonight I ask that you blanket them with peace as they rest securely in you help them settle into the deepest of sleep so that they will awaken refreshed and restored thank you good good father for being with them tonight in Jesus name amen tonight you will be lulled into a peaceful calming sleep with several different translations of Psalm 23 from the traditional King James Version to the fiery passion translation you will hear this beloved psalm brought to life as you prepare to fall asleep quickly to the Word of God make yourself comfortable in your bed relax your muscles take deep steadying breaths let the distractions flit like dragonflies through your mind without landing let the peace of Christ guard your heart and your mind so that you can rest deeply tonight father God we are grateful for your love and your care for us I pray over this listener tonight that they would hear these words not only with their ears but with their very soul lead them beside still waters make them lie down in green pastures restore their soul guide them in paths of righteousness for your namesake in the mighty name of Jesus amen King James Version the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he maketh me lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters he restoreth my soul he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever 
ESV the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil my cup overflows surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever CEB the Lord is my Shepherd I lack nothing he lets me rest in grassy meadows he leads me to restful waters he guides me in proper paths for the sake of his good name even when I walk through the darkest valley I fear no danger because you are with me your rod and your staff they protect me you set a table for me right in front of my enemies you bathe my head in oil my cup is so full it spills over yes goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will live in the Lord's house as long as I live the message God my Shepherd I don't need a thing you have bedded me down in lush meadows you find me quiet pools to drink from true to your word you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction even when the way goes through death valley I'm not afraid when you walk at my side your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure you serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies you revive my drooping head my cup brims with blessing your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life NIV the Lord is my Shepherd I lack nothing he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside quiet waters he refreshes my soul he guides me along the right paths for his name's sake even though I walk through the darkest valley I will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil my cup overflows surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever good news translation the Lord is my Shepherd I have everything I need he lets me rest in fields of green grass 
and leads me to quiet pools of fresh water he gives me new strength he guides me in the right paths as he has promised even if I go through the deepest darkness I will not be afraid for you are with me Lord your shepherd's rod and staff protect me you prepare a banquet for me where all my enemies can see me you welcome me as an honored guest and fill my cup to the brim I know that your goodness and love will be with me all my life in your house will be my home as long as I live NLT the Lord is my Shepherd I have all that I need he lets me rest in green meadows he leads me beside peaceful streams he renews my strength he guides me along right paths bringing honor to his name even when I walk through the darkest valley I will not be afraid for you are close beside me your rod and your staff protect and comfort me you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies you honor me by anointing my head with oil my cup overflows with blessings surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will live in the house of the Lord forever the voice the eternal is my Shepherd he cares for me always he provides me rest in rich green fields beside streams of refreshing water he soothes my fears he makes me whole again steering me off worn hard paths to roads where truth and righteousness echo his name even in the unending shadows of death's darkness I am not overcome by fear because you are with me in those dark moments near with your protection and guidance I am comforted you spread out a table before me provisions in the midst of attack from my enemies you care for all my needs anointing my head with soothing fragrant oil filling my cup again and again with your grace certainly your faithful protection and loving provision will pursue me where I go always everywhere I will always be with the eternal in your house forever the passion translation the Lord is my best friend and my Shepherd I always have more than enough he offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love his tracks take me to an oasis of peace a quiet brook of bliss that's where he restores and revives my life he opens before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name 
Lord even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness fear will never conquer me for you already have you remain close to me and lead me through it all the way your authority is my strength and my peace the comfort of your love takes away my fear I'll never be lonely for you are near you become my delicious feast even when my enemies dare to fight you anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit you give me all I can drink of you until my heart overflows so why would I fear the future for your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life then afterward when my life is through I'll return to your glorious presence to be forever with you Lord God lover of your people protector shepherd Savior we praise you and worship you for your goodness and your kindness I pray over your beloved child tonight that they would rest in your presence sleep in your arms trust you with their whole being may your goodness and mercy abound in them forever and ever as they abide in you in the precious name of Jesus I pray amen King James Version the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he maketh me lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters he restoreth my soul he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever ESV the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil my cup overflows surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord 
forever. C.E.B. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He lets me rest in grassy meadows. He leads me to restful waters. He guides me in proper paths for the sake of his good name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no danger because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they protect me. You set a table for me right in front of my enemies. You bathe my head in oil. My cup is so full, it spills over. Yes, goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the Lord's house as long as I live. The message God, my shepherd. I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I'm not afraid when you walk at my side. Your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. My cup brims with blessing. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. NIV The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Good News Translation The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He lets me rest in fields of green grass and leads me to quiet pools of fresh water. He gives me new strength. He guides me in the right paths, as he has promised. Even if I go through the deepest darkness, I will not be afraid. For you are with me, Lord. Your shepherd's rod and staff protect me. You prepare a banquet for me where all my enemies can see me. You welcome me as an honored guest and fill my cup to the brim. I know that your goodness and love will be with me all my life. In your house will be my home as long as I live. NLT The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. 
he leads me beside peaceful streams he renews my strength he guides me along right paths bringing honor to his name even when I walk through the darkest valley I will not be afraid for you are close beside me your rod and your staff protect and comfort me you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies you honor me by anointing my head with oil my cup overflows with blessings surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will live in the house of the Lord forever the voice the eternal is my shepherd he cares for me always he provides me rest in rich green fields beside streams of refreshing water he soothes my fears he makes me whole again steering me off worn hard paths to roads where truth and righteousness echo his name even in the unending shadows of death's darkness I am not overcome by fear because you are with me in those dark moments near with your protection and guidance I am comforted you spread out a table before me provisions in the midst of attack from my enemies you care for all my needs anointing my head with soothing fragrant oil filling my cup again and again with your grace certainly your faithful protection and loving provision will pursue me where I go always everywhere I will always be with the eternal in your house forever the passion translation the Lord is my best friend and my shepherd I always have more than enough he offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love his tracks take me to an oasis of peace a quiet brook of bliss that's where he restores and revives my life he opens before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name Lord even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness fear will never conquer me for you already have you remain close to me and lead me through it all the way your authority is my strength and my peace the comfort of your love takes away my fear I'll never be lonely for you are near you become my delicious feast even when my enemies dare to fight you anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit you give me all I can drink of you until my heart overflows so why would I fear the future for your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life then afterward 
when my life is through I'll return to your glorious presence to be forever with you Lord God lover of your people protector shepherd Savior we praise you and worship you for your goodness and your kindness I pray over your beloved child tonight that they would rest in your presence sleep in your arms trust you with their whole being may your goodness and mercy abound in them forever and ever as they abide in you in the precious name of Jesus I pray amen King James Version the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he maketh me lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters he restoreth my soul he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever ESV the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil my cup overflows surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever CEB the Lord is my shepherd I lack nothing he lets me rest in grassy meadows he leads me to restful waters he guides me in proper paths for the sake of his good name even when I walk through the darkest valley I fear no danger because you are with me your rod and your staff they protect me you set a table for me right in front of my enemies you bathe my head in oil my cup is so full it spills over yes goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will live in the Lord's house as long as I live 
the message God my Shepherd I don't need a thing you have bedded me down in lush meadows you find me quiet pools to drink from true to your word you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction even when the way goes through death valley I'm not afraid when you walk at my side your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure you serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies you revive my drooping head my cup brims with blessing your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life NIV the Lord is my Shepherd I lack nothing he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside quiet waters he refreshes my soul he guides me along the right paths for his name's sake even though I walk through the darkest valley I will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil my cup overflows surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever good news translation the Lord is my Shepherd I have everything I need he lets me rest in fields of green grass and leads me to quiet pools of fresh water he gives me new strength he guides me in the right paths as he has promised even if I go through the deepest darkness I will not be afraid for you are with me Lord your shepherd's rod and staff protect me you prepare a banquet for me where all my enemies can see me you welcome me as an honored guest and fill my cup to the brim I know that your goodness and love will be with me all my life in your house will be my home as long as I live NLT the Lord is my Shepherd I have all that I need he lets me rest in green meadows he leads me beside peaceful streams he renews my strength he guides me along right paths bringing honor to his name even when I walk through the darkest valley I will not be afraid for you are close beside me your rod and your staff protect and comfort me you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies you honor me by anointing my head with oil my cup overflows with blessings surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will live in the house of the Lord forever the voice 
the eternal is my shepherd he cares for me always he provides me rest in rich green fields beside streams of refreshing water he soothes my fears he makes me whole again steering me off worn hard paths to roads where truth and righteousness echo his name even in the unending shadows of death's darkness I am not overcome by fear because you are with me in those dark moments near with your protection and guidance I am comforted you spread out a table before me provisions in the midst of attack from my enemies you care for all my needs anointing my head with soothing fragrant oil filling my cup again and again with your grace certainly your faithful protection and loving provision will pursue me where I go always everywhere I will always be with the eternal in your house forever the passion translation the Lord is my best friend and my shepherd I always have more than enough he offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love his tracks take me to an oasis of peace a quiet brook of bliss that's where he restores and revives my life he opens before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name Lord even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness fear will never conquer me for you already have you remain close to me and lead me through it all the way your authority is my strength and my peace the comfort of your love takes away my fear I'll never be lonely for you are near you become my delicious feast even when my enemies dare to fight you anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit you give me all I can drink of you until my heart overflows so why would I fear the future for your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life then afterward when my life is through I'll return to your glorious presence to be forever with you. Lord God, lover of your people, protector, shepherd, savior, We praise you and worship you for your goodness and your kindness. I pray over your beloved child tonight that they would rest in your presence, sleep in your arms, trust you with their whole being. May your goodness and mercy abound in them forever and ever as they abide in you 
in the precious name of Jesus I pray amen imagine that you are in a peaceful valley it's lush and green with glorious rolling hills that rise and fall into the distance wildflowers dot the landscape with vibrant color yellow daffodils white jasmine with sweet smelling petals you walk slowly through the valley in perfect peace breathing the fresh spring air up above you see a clear blue sky with wispy clouds floating overhead there is stillness and peace all around you are fully content and fully relaxed in the valley Jesus is there with you he is happy that you want to spend time with him here see the glow of his smile as you walk side by side you hear Jesus speak Psalm 121 out loud to you the words fill the valley alive with his spirit they calm your heart mind and soul I will lift my eyes to the hills where does my help come from my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth he will not allow your foot to be moved he who keeps you will not slumber behold he who keeps Israel shall never slumber nor sleep the Lord is your keeper the Lord is your shade at your right hand the Sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night the Lord shall preserve you from all evil he shall preserve your soul the Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore you come to a soft blanket spread out for you in the shade the Sun will not strike you by day nor the moon by night and Jesus invites you to rest right here and you lie dreamily in the valley the Lord is your keeper he who keeps you will not slumber he keeps Israel safe and he will keep you safe he will neither sleep nor slumber your heart fills with the comfort that God is your keeper your protector your guide his spirit fills your room he shall preserve you from all evil you fall you drift slowly softly asleep
your mind is refreshed your arms and back feel light and restored from deep sleep Jesus walks again with you through the valley he continues speaking Psalm 121 over you slowly like a command making each word true I lift up my eyes to the hills from where does my help come from as you walk through the beautiful green valley the gentle rolling hills rising up all around you you know where your help comes from he is standing right beside you in glowing robes (laughs) the risen Lord he is so peaceful you are immersed in a sense of stillness and security as you look around at the magnificent landscape you know just by the beauty of creation that God is your creator your provider your help you also know that the psalmist does not look to nature for help as beautiful as the hills may be the psalmist's help comes from the very one who made the hills the heavens and the earth God my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth the Lord God is with you in the valley God the Father calls out to you from the hills your heart rejoices at his voice you call out to him and before a word is even on your tongue he knows it he is already sending the help you need at just the right time and in just the right way he will not let your foot be moved he who keeps you will not slumber behold he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep you are amazed by the faithfulness of God the one who does not slumber or sleep he never grows weary of that you can be sure he is a constant presence in your life you feel his presence now your feet are steady on solid ground you have nothing to fear the Lord is your keeper the Lord is your shade on your right hand the Sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night the warmth of the Sun is shining down on you and you bask in its light and when it becomes too hot God becomes your shade the coolness on your face he is your keeper and guardian you allow yourself to relax fully in his loving arms he is guiding you in the way you should go even in the night watches when the way seems dark and unfamiliar your foot does not stumble his spirit is there to lead you 
feel him leading you tonight no matter how dark it seems your footsteps are sure the Lord will keep you from all evil he will keep your life the safety you feel in the fold of the Lord's loving arms is the most secure feeling in the world all the cares of life have faded into the night you are able to breathe deeply and know that you are completely safe no evil can touch you for the Lord is keeping you from everything that is harmful or contrary to his love for you your very life is held fastly in the palm of his hand you've never felt so protected it's as if walls of love have been placed around you so that nothing can reach you you are surrounded by God's perfect peace the Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forever more as you go through the valley and find pasture your life is locked in and secured in the fold of the great Shepherd he watches over your coming and your going there is nothing that escapes his sovereignty he is your keeper he keeps watch over you from this time forth now and forevermore tomorrow God will watch over you he will guide your steps the peace of Jesus will guard your heart from this time forth and forevermore you are kept by the love of the Lord he is your help in time of need he is your rock your fortress and your deliverer now be still rest deeply and know that God is with you allow his presence to cover you as you sleep in total peace tonight dream peacefully as I pray gracious God thank you for your provision over your loved one tonight I ask for healing rest and peaceful sleep as they trust in you help them always to remember that their help comes from you alone in Jesus's holy name I pray amen may the Lord bless you and keep you may the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you may the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace as you have contemplated hard decisions set and pursued new goals and asked for God's guidance in your life you have seen him there and know that he has been walking with you his word has been your light and has guided all your paths Oh beloved of God 
you have walked in the light of the Lord letting his word be your guide and the words that have guided you are the same words that you passed on to those you love just as Israel's trusted leader Moses said to the people in Deuteronomy 6 7 talking about the words of God you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise in all moments walking with God brings you the opportunity to point others to him as your friends and family have looked to you for guidance you have pointed them to God's Word urging them to walk with God and find their hope in him urging them to walk in the light of the Lord Oh beloved of God come let us walk in the light of the Lord you give thanks to the Lord for his nearness in your life and for his presence walking alongside you you can't help but think of Jesus Jesus the Son of God your co-heir and beloved big brother in God of all the ways to walk let us walk with him John 8 12 says again Jesus spoke to them saying I am the light of the world whoever knows me will not walk in darkness but will have the light of life Jesus is the light that lights our path he is the one who guides our way the word incarnate who leads us in the light as dusk fades tonight you delight to know that the one who lights our path will never fade his light will never dim follow him and you will not walk in darkness because you have the light of life oh beloved of God walk in the light of the Lord walk in the light of the one who is the light of the world as the evening walk nears its end you think ahead about your life what does God have in store for you in the coming days and weeks and years you think with joy when you consider the many ways in which you will experience God's goodness through the years you've yet to live the fear you have for the unknown sorrows and struggles is eased by knowing that you are not walking alone you are walking in the light of the Lord and his goodness goes before you his nearness is beside you his spirit is ever leading and ever guiding the roads you have yet to walk with him are many and as you consider what life will look like as you walk with him you think of the words of the Apostle Paul in his letter to the church in Ephesus Ephesians 4 1 says I therefore a prisoner for the Lord urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called Paul calls himself a prisoner not saying that he was trapped but using the imagery of being bound or linked to someone or something he had willingly bound himself to the Lord and so have you beloved of God having linked yourself to the goodness of the Lord you choose to walk in a way that reflects that reality 
O beloved of God, come and walk in the light of the Lord. Walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. As Paul goes on to describe what that looks like, make it the aim of your life. In Ephesians 4, 2 and 3, he continues, Walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. You're nearing the end of your walk tonight. But your walk with God will continue throughout your life. And walking with Him leads you to take on His character of humility and gentleness. You imagine what it would look like to walk in that way tomorrow and the next day. How might a patient heart transform you? What might love do to shape your relationships with those at work or those in your home or those you interact with in the store or at the park? Those walking in a manner worthy of their calling see the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace shaping every aspect of their lives. Let it be true for you too. O beloved of God, walk in the light of the Lord. The sun is setting quickly as you watch it near the horizon. The pinks and purples have faded, and the yellow of the sun rays have turned the sky an electric orange. It's deep and red. The colors are striking against the ever darkening blue. Evening is turning into night, and although the darkness is edging out the sun, the light of the Lord does not fade. You feel the comfort of his nearness in this moment more than any other. Though the sun has set on this day, you know it only means another night of rest and another day to wake to new mercies and to walk in the deep fellowship of knowing God, of trusting him, and of inviting him to walk with you through the joys and sorrows of this precious life. O beloved of God, continue to walk in the light of the Lord. Remember the promise that God will never leave you nor forsake you. He is walking with you. Father God, I give you thanks and praise for the ways that you have faithfully walked with me through the many seasons of my life. As I consider your nearness, I feel a deep joy and peace in knowing that I am not alone. Thank you for walking with me. Thank you for being the light that lights my path, ever leading me from one thing to the next. Continue to walk with me, to go before me and beside me as I continue through the journey of life. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Rest well tonight, and wake tomorrow to walk in the light of the Lord. I feel like 
when I listen to the sleep meditations that I have a friend next to me.